Hey, hey, welcome everybody to another live episode of the Outlaw Nation here on the Outlaw Nation channel. I am the Outlaw, John Roca. Thanks so much for joining us tonight here, Thursday night, 6 p.m. PT. Hey, the world's going crazy. Social media is back to a cesspool of madness. Well, you got this show to entertain you, make you laugh, make you smile, uh, make you happy about the world, uh, and have a little fun with us, at least for a little while. Take your mind off the madness that's going on in the world, at least for a little while. I'm excited, so excited. I'm, I'm going to introduce our guest in just a second, but I just want to tell you a couple things about the Outlaw Nation, what we got going on. Just finished an interview with Kyle Thrash today. He's the director of this new documentary about the Eagles winning the Super Bowl. It is called Maybe Next Year. I'm dropping that interview tomorrow. The Top 10 dropped their new show this morning. We're still going on the Top 10. Five years of doing that podcast. Still kicking ass with it. Uh, we drop it uh, this uh, today. We dropped uh, a twenty uh, top ten this morning. So go and find that on the top ten podcast feed or on the top ten YouTube channel. We're talking. We're talking about films, uh, modern films about old Hollywood. Modern films, top ten films about old Hollywood. It's a lot of fun there. And then this Friday, we are doing the commitments on the cinephiles, breaking down the commitments. Taking it scene by scene, have a little fun there. Me and Steve Morris talking about that on the Center Balls. And don't forget tomorrow, because it's Wednesday. Wednesday is another brand new episode of the Geek Buddies here on the Outlaw Nation channel. And it'll be up on the Geek Buddies podcast feed as well tomorrow. But tonight, tonight, I'm so excited to welcome. Uh, how can I tell you? This is the man that I first started doing podcasts with, a show with. I mean, I started with Christian Harloff. But then we branched off, and this is the first one that we pitched, and we were uh, put together way back when in the times of times of yore in a podcast called Cast of Characters. We got back together and uh, put it back together, called it Super Animation Game Time, uh, and uh, we have kept in touch with each other. And four years ago, we shared one uh, hell of a night of drinks, <laughs> just decompressing from the madness of electing uh, Donald Trump to be our president. But... Uh, let me introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, he is an actor known for the films Any Bullet Will Do, Carn Artists. He's seen him on TV in Orbital Redux, the Sarah Connor Chronicles. In animation, you know him as the voice of Ben 10. Seen him and heard him in Young Justice as well. In anime, very famous voice for Naruto, uh, Guren Lagan. I hope I said that right. And in video games, Prince of Persia. And of course, he is the voice of Peter Parker on the most recent Spider-Man game, Flum from PlayStation, and maybe he'll have something to tell us about the upcoming Miles Morales game, which drops in a couple of days. I got my PS5 coming midnight on Thursday night at Best Buy. They can't keep me out. I'm going to get that. He's a writer, producer, actor, and he has published one of the most incredible books about voiceover with his beautiful, lovely, and talented wife, Tara Platt. It is called Voiceover, Voice Actor, The Extended Edition. I'm telling you, if you want to get into voiceover, this is the book you need to get. It is a straightforward book, tells you exactly what you need to do to get into the world of voice. Or I am proud, super proud to call this man my friend, and I'm very honored that we are catching up today for the first time in a long time here on the Outlaw Nation show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Yuri Lowenthal. How are you, Yuri? John, can I marry you after that? That was, <laughs> that was amazing. That was, uh, thank you. That You're welcome, bro. You're welcome. Super delicious. I've missed you so much. Ditto, my friend. Ditto, man. I mean, it's been crazy that we have been in each other's lives for so long now after starting out and doing that show, not knowing where we were going to go, uh, and then coming back together to do that other show, Super Animation Game Time, and then, you know, touching base with each other throughout the years. And it's been great to see you still doing things, still booking work, still working consistently. You and Tara, you became a dad. Uh, you know, all these things have happened in your life. Um, where are you not at right now? As a human being, as a person, emotionally, where are you at right now, Yuri? Uh, I'm, you know, breathing a little better the last few days than I have in four years. Uh, mm -hmm. I gotta say, <laughs> um, but but the last, you know, last seven, I'm I've been I've been in lockdown for uh, eight months almost. Mm. On 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 Friday, it'll be eight months. Wow! So with a four year old, so, right? Um, so that has been rough. I mean, I mean, lockdown the the pandemic and. 
you know, the political situation and just yeah. everything has had me feeling really low. The, the last eight months have been hard. Wow. And then you add, uh, you know, forest fires into it that make the, the air toxic. So I can't yeah. even get outside and, you know, get some exercise. And um, I've been a little, I've been low. I've been trying yeah. to keep my spirits up. Uh, yeah. I've been low, but I've been but, but feeling a little better lately, a little more. Dare, dare I say hopeful I, <laughs> after, you know, after that, that fateful day four years ago, like it's, it's been, I've, I haven't allowed myself to hope too much it hurts too, too hard. It's um, true. I mean, one yeah. of the things Yuri reminded me the other day, he texted me the other day and I've been thinking about him because I've been wanting to ask him to come on the show. And he texted me and he was like, Hey, remember four years ago when we went on that night of drinks after Trump was elected? And I was like, Oh my God. Wow. Yeah, that's right. We didn't even it, wait to go out, John. I started making you drink on the show. That's on the true. way to the show, that's I true. stopped off and bought a bottle of my favorite bourbon, and I brought it <laughs> right onto the set. And You're right. I just started drinking. I'm just sorry to drinking. stay. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. But now we're here, and you've been working so consistently, so consistently, Yuri. What is what has been the 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 uh, the key or the gift, what do you think it is that people just keep co coming back to you and casting you and things, and you keep finding your way to these incredible, iconic characters and performances because you're an incredible talent? What do you think it is? Um, whew, I don't know. Uh, I'm honestly, I'm honestly not sure. I I show up on time. Uh, I smell nice when I come in. <laughs> uh, I I play well with others. We always have a good time. I mean, sometimes I think I get hired not because I was the most talented person to audition, <laughs> but because I always make sure we have a good time. I, you know, yeah. um, that may be some of it. I don't know. I, no. Relentlessness. You just gotta, you gotta keep at it. You can't have a rest on your laurels. Right. Uh, so when, when other people aren't, aren't casting me, I, I try to create projects on my own. Uh, yeah. And that, that keeps my, that at least keeps my head in the right place when, right. uh, when, uh, you know, other people aren't hiring me. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, this business, it's a, it's, it's up and down no matter who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, you're mm -hmm. on, you're on top until they get sick of you. And then you're, you know, you got to find something to do to tread water until they forget about you. <laughs> um, because, you know, I'm, I'm not always going to, you know, and through my career, I haven't always been cast in leads and right. You know, when I'm not, when I don't have a big part on something, I just got to hustle to to play a bunch of you know smaller parts yeah. and and you know just sort of keep uh, keep those relationships alive and just keep uh, keep hope alive as it is and and yeah. uh, and and you know be okay with with just just coming in you know to to fill in on a, an episode here or background yeah. characters there because that's still fun, man. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, it's where it's where sometimes I get to flex muscles that I wouldn't normally get to to flex. Well, the thing, else. the thing is interesting too, Yuri, I've started watching more uh, British television because my girlfriend's massively into British television. And I find that it's so fascinating. Dude, I've got a recommendation for you. Don't let me Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I find it so fascinating, Yuri. And if you watch enough of them, you notice it yourself, I'm sure. These people can sometimes be leads. And in the next series, they're part of the ensemble yep. or, uh, or a secondary character. And then boom, a year later, they pop up in their lead of another show and then go right back down again. It's mind blowing. Like I, I was watching, I'm up to episode seven or episode eight of Gangs of London, which is this awesome new show that came out I've, of the UK. Yeah, I've I've heard oh. of it and I haven't, yeah. sorry, I'm just reaching, I realized I didn't plug my laptop in and I don't oh, want okay. to eye on you. So I'm just, <laughs> no worries, no worries. I'm like, um, oh my God, I, where's my... But I saw the lead of Hinterland in there as a smaller part with only three episodes. So it's just strange how that works. And voiceover is that way as well, because you just want to keep working and, and, and uh, working out the skills and working out the, the characters and putting it all together. So it's, it's, it's great to keep going. I mean, to keep being in demand in that way. I think it's a, yeah, it's a rarity, like, man. And if you like acting, you just like acting. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it, I'm not going to lie. You know, it's cool to be like the lead on something mm -hmm. for sure. But yeah, but I, 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 I love working and I love, Taking small parts where I get to take chances and yeah, you know, goof off a little bit. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, but be before I forget, yes, uh, before I forget, two things. Okay. Um, Giri Giri Haji, Duty Shame, on uh, Netflix. Okay. A British show. Yes. About that takes place in in London and Japan, and uh, London and Tokyo. And yes. McDonald Kelly McDonald is Kelly the lead McDonald, in it, right? Who yeah. is just the best. Um, but the whole cast is great, and the direction, like this showrunner, 
it's going to make me want to go back and see what else he's done. Wow. Um, Joe okay. Barton or Joe Morton. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Joe Morton. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So that, and okay. um, I mean, we could talk about British TV all night. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan, uh, but uh, that, and how the hell did you get a PS5? Yeah, you? man. Um, I, I tried. Can, I can't, I can't get one. <laughs> <laughs> that night when they made him available, oh, that day when they made him available, from the morning on, in between my shows or in between whatever I was doing, I uh, kept checking in. And then I'd seen someone on Twitter say they've released some more. And when I saw them just randomly sell it on Twitter, I jumped onto the Best Buy site and was able to order one that they had just of the ones that just released. And I'm getting the digital copy one, like the I'm sorry, the uh, physical cop physical media one. Yeah. I don't want the digital. I don't trust something I can't have in my hands. I'm old school like that. It. I'm with so, you. So yeah, so I'm getting it, and I'll finally get your uh, Spider Man game and play it. Because I've been because I had an Xbox for so long, right? That I couldn't change over because it was too expensive to change over. Yeah. So oh, dude, I'm gonna. I, just, I feel like I, I just got my PS4 Pro with the Spider-Man logo on. I'm like, yeah. this is the last machine I'll need for years. Oh wait, the PS5 is coming out in two years. You know, like. <laughs> exactly. So I mean, but I'm looking forward to it. You know, we should talk about that. Oh, real quick, we've got uh, Chris Taylor sent in a super chat. Says Yuri, could you beat <laughs> Kevin Conroy in a fight? LOL. <laughs> Hell no. That dude is Batman. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Batman is Batman is Batman. It's it's funny. I talk about that sometimes. I'm like, in my head, I think I'm Batman. But when my voice comes out, I'm always Robin. <laughs> you know, like, like, I'll always play Robin or Spider-Man, which is, you know, when you think about if you got to take second place, Spider-Man's a pretty good second place. It's true. That's true. But, that's for sure. But no, but Kevin Conroy, he's... Oof. <laughs> is the master well i mean we're we should mention this you know you you've got you did this uh great thing in 2018 being the voice of peter parker slash spider-man in this incredible game i remember when i was at collider you came uh yeah. with one of the producers on the show we got a chance to talk to you about it. it was such a blast um now we're about to see this Miles Morales game coming out. I know you can't too much talk too much about it, but yeah. is there anything you can tell us? I mean, I saw the 22 minutes that they released. My lord, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, and seeing the trailers, have you got a chance to play this thing or see anything? Like, are you involved no. in any way? Can you say anything about it? I mean, I can say that that I was involved in the game, but okay. very little. It's Miles's game. Mm -hmm. It's Najee's game, and um. And they, that was that was intentional. I think it was exactly the right way to go. Right. Um, but you'll see me in there uh, okay. a little bit. Oh. I gotta you know pass the torch a little bit and <laughs> um, and and let's just say that they found because I, I don't want to. I shouldn't even be talking about it at all. I don't think. <laughs> but it's what, what's you know what what is it two days from now? Yes, yeah, two days from now. Um, come after me, Sony. <laughs> uh, but but they they found a clever way to keep me in a little more of the game than. Then I should be allowed to be. In. So, oh, so, that's you heard awesome. it here first on the Outlaw Nation. <laughs> um, so and uh, yeah, uh, there's there's some there's some there's some funny moments. Nice, some funny moments. that's yeah. awesome, dude. I can't wait to see. It. But I can't, I can't wait, wait to, play to see. It. I mean, it's going to be a surprise to me too. Mostly, oh, right. you know, when I finally get a chance to play it, if I ever get a <laughs> PS5. Um, but yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's mostly a surprise. You know, it's mostly going to be a surprise for me. Wow. Do you know any, can you, so uh, have they announced the cast list or any, is there anybody that you can I say? I don't know if they've announced it yet. So I don't know either. Probably. I'm bad yeah. at stuff like that. I'm always the last to know on something. People are always like, so in the game or when is the game or that? I'm like, man, I have no idea. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm always the last person to find out. So yeah, you're a bit of a whole body. You're not a going out, partying, hanging out, playing the games with a bunch of people kind of guy. He's, he's very laid back. He loves his yeah. wife. He loves his child. He loves his family home. So, you know, this is where you're going to find Yuri. So he's not always going to And, you know, and there's a pandemic out there. That is yeah, true. even more of a homebody over the last <laughs> you know, eight months. Yeah. What, what, uh, if, what have you been? You've said you've been isolated. Is this a self isolated? Like, you don't have it, right? You never got it or anything. It's you more your fear for your child. Yeah. Uh, Tara and I both got really sick in January. Oh, God. And it was all the, the symptoms of COVID. Wow. But before they said that it had reached the, but we had been traveling internationally. Uh huh. Uh, before then so i don't know i don't mm. when we finally got tested for antibodies like four months later mm -hmm. they said we'd have antibodies but they all they also say that those go away so right um so when they when they had the test came back negative 
Um, I don't think we've gotten it. And I'm, I'm happy to say that because, um, so, you know, I've talked to friends of mine who have had it and they've, they get better, but then they get worse or they get better, but they're like, wow, I can't run anymore. Uh, more than like, you know, five minutes and kept, you know, or I've got weird headaches or I've, you know, like just one thing after another, I'm like, yeah. So, so I don't want to mess with any of that. I know the percentage is low that, that I would, you know, go on a ventilator or die from. I don't want to roll those dice. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I, I've been, uh, I have one of the, I've been bron- I've bron- having bronchitis. I've been having bronchitis for the last three or four years. Never I've gotten Oof. sick. It's devolved like three times last uh, year. I get, get devolved into bronchitis. Uh, oh, yeah. and it, uh, so I have been hyper paranoid about getting yeah. this thing. And yeah. And one of the reasons we moved out of LA and by the way, I told Yuri this for the first time off camera, we moved out of LA, uh, was because the spikes were happening so strongly there. And at, uh, we, and we were seeing more and more people, not wearing masks, you know, not yeah. social distancing, sitting in restaurants with tables close to each other. Uh, and it was uh, driving us rage. a little bit batty. Was that fills me with rage? I actually, yeah. I had to get a heavy bag. I got a 70 pound heavy bag and hung it from a tree in my backyard. And, and after we go on our walks in the morning where we, you know, we wear a mask and we avoid yeah. people like the plague. Yeah. Um, and we just see, you know, people, you know, just sitting in restaurants and, you know, wearing, you know, not wearing their masks. I just come home and I wrap my hands and I just <laughs> beat the bag until all the rage is out of me. It's, I think it's been very healthy, actually. That's good. It sounds healthy. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds healthy as hell. Yeah. So what else have you been working on, man? What else have you been focusing your time on or concentrating on to kind of pass the time while you're self-isolating? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yes, no, sir. I've been uh, <laughs> day drinking. Uh, I've been keeping, I've been keeping my empties just to, just to, uh, you know, uh, keep me on the straight and narrow. <laughs> I, can, I can look and say, okay, that's probably you should probably slow down. No, I actually, I actually took September off of uh, drinking just to see if I had a problem, <laughs> and, oh um, God, and, I, wow. and it was fine. It was, it was annoying, but it wasn't, it wasn't hard. So right, right. So I think, <laughs> I think I'm doing okay. Uh, uh, you know, I've been. I'll be honest, I. Yeah. I, you know, all my friends are like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm writing the screenplay I always wanted to, or I'm getting into shape, or, you know, I'm writing the great American novel, or, you know, I've got so much time with my kids now, and it's, it's great. And I'm like, honestly, for me, it's all I can do to get through the day. Wow. Yeah. Like, I, I thought, I thought that, yeah, no, with, with this time, I should be doing this or that or the other. Yeah. And I just find myself, whatever it takes to get through the day. I've been auditioning. I've been, thankfully, I've been working. Yeah. Because I've got... You know, set up at home and I can yeah. record, you know, studio level stuff from home. Right. right. Uh, but, uh, and I, and a lot of my friends are not, and it's, it's hard yeah. to see that. But, um, but so I've, so I've been able to work and, you know, I'm working on, you know, Tara and I are working on some of our own projects, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but, but I had to stop beating myself up that I, that I hadn't written, you know, six screenplays and it got, you know, like ripped abs and you know like yeah. like all the like things that i i would felt that you know oh if i'm going to be home all this time right i should use that time yeah. um and it's hard you know yeah. Hard. yeah what what is it uh what do you find that uh other than the working out what do you find gives you the release you need is it spending time with your child is it just taking those walks in the morning oh, he what? drives me nuts um, <laughs> <laughs> he's the opposite um but no, I mean, it's, you know, it is, he is, he's just, he's, a, he's amazing, uh, but he's a pain in the ass. He's so, he's so smart. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's just, it's just trouble. He's really willful, mm-hmm. uh, which, which is the way I want him to be in the world. Right. You know, I want right. him to be able to stand up for himself and uh, you right. know, not take any shit from anyone, yeah. but not with me. Like, I don't want him to be that way with me. Uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, exercise for sure. Getting mm-hmm. out, you know, those those early morning family walks and then as much exercise as I can, as I can get. Yeah. And, um, in addition to, uh, you know, I, I try to, I've been trying to work some meditation in, Oh, nice. uh, trying to work some, some yoga in at home. I used to go to a yoga studio, mm-hmm. but you know, that's out the window for, right, for now. Right, right, right. So I've been trying to try to, you know, do stuff at home, but you got to really like schedule that. I yeah. found that like, Oh, if I have some time, I'll do that thing. And then the day's gone and I'm, you know, I haven't done any exercise or right, right. or whatever, <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah, I try. I try to stay off social media when when my head starts to get away from me. Yeah, uh, for sure. I've been I've been you know watching stuff, which is nice. Yeah, watching more stuff than I used to. Playing more games than than I than I did before the oh, pandemic. Nice. Okay. I, le I learned a little something about myself and games. I've gotten to a place where I don't like games where I have to learn lots of complicated mechanics and then use them to constantly fight off things that are trying to kill me. <laughs> um, it's just, it just makes me too, like I've got enough drama and like enough danger in my life yeah. that, <laughs> that I don't want that like when I go to a game. So I play like story games, like games yeah. where nothing's trying to kill you. And you're just walking through some sort of mystery or some sort of story, and the, the world is really cool, and the the writing's really good, and the character's interesting. Right. And and I know that I'll just get through it eventually. I don't have to learn like, you know, uh, you know, Xbox Zero Triangle. Da. You know, like I mean, I didn't even finish Spider Man. Oh wow! Which is really embarrassing. I yeah no I I, I didn't even finish it because it was just, ah, it was just it was it was too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm getting old, man. I don't know, but but so yeah, it happens, so those, man. But I did learn that those are the games I like to play. Like I played Firewatch, and I was like, oh, this is, you know, and, and uh, Edith Finch and right. um, Journey, and just games where you could lose yourself in it and not worry about anything. Have you doing any Twitch? Have you been doing any Twitch stuff? People, the kids are into the Twitch now. I, kids, kids are into the Twitch and the TikTok. Um, yep. I think I started a Twitch account, and I don't know what to do with it. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I, um, uh, no, I don't know. I don't know what to do with Twitch. Okay. I have been doing, I'll tell you what I have been doing. Okay, please. Um, I've been working with a company called Streamily to okay. do, uh, live autograph signings. I go live on oh, Instagram. Oh yeah, yeah. Talk to me about that. What is that? I saw yeah, you tweet well, about it or Instagram about well, it. I had a what bunch is... of, yeah, you know, I had a bunch of convention appearances booked, which yeah. is how Tara and I travel and, you know, make money and meet yeah. fans. And, uh, that was, that was something we would do throughout the year. And, Obviously, for the pandemic, nobody's doing conventions because right, you can't because right. it's not safe. True. So uh, this company, uh, Streamily, uh, set it up so that we can go live on our, you know, our platform of, of choice, whether it's Twitch or Instagram Live or TikTok yeah. or whatever, and sign autographs live for oh, wow. people, and then Streamily takes care of getting those autographs to the people who ordered them. Like I, you know, I sign them on camera live. Yeah. People can tune in or they can just, you know, I always um, archive it, you know, so yeah. people can, can watch it later uh, if they, if they, if they can't make it during that time. Right. But, uh, but it's been really cool. Cause they, you know, they, they're in the chat, they can ask questions. I'm signing stuff. I can show it to them. Really? Um, and it's not the same as getting to hang out with fans at conventions. Right. 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 But I'll tell you what, um, it's it's been the next best thing huh. and it's allowed me to to connect with with people all over the world yeah um and it's been it's been cool do you sign like on a pad and then they transfer that sign or do you go no do they I, send I it print, something and you sign it again i print uh, i print a bunch of like photo prints oh uh, uh yeah and then i sign holy them. shit so you're sitting I there know, wow I'm, sitting, I'm, I'm literally signing uh you know a print I show it to him. I put it on a little stack. <laughs> I put it in a box out in front of my house. Streamily comes and picks it up, and um, and they they take care of mailing it to you know whoever ordered it. That's incredible. Which is, which is great. Yeah. Holy shit, Sean! I should do that for the Outlaw Nation. I should send a bunch of pictures and have me sign it to a streamer. <laughs> that would be a blast. Was was Sean who was who was in when when I hopped in there? Yeah. Yeah. That's my producer on the show. He'll come on every oh, once in a while and, and ask yeah, questions. Yeah, please do. Stuff. We didn't get a chance to meet or anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had to jump on. Um, yeah. We got some questions that have come in here from the uh, Streamlabs section. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, please, we've got an, uh, we only have Yuri for another hour. So if you've got questions, yeah. ask them now. Send them in through the Super Chat. Send them in through Streamlabs. You see the address uh, or you see the address in the description down below, streamlabs.com slash uh, uh, John Roca says. Just go there and uh, send in whatever you want to send in. And then I'll ask the question of Yuri for sure. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Let's ask the first one. It is from agent double O ice says uh, good day to you guys. Yuri. I loved you voicing my favorite all time favorite character. Iceman wish the show could have gone on more. Yeah. Can you talk about that? Yeah. I mean that uh, I'm, I'm assuming he's talking uh, Wolverine and the X-Men. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was, 
that was a dream come true. I mean, what a great cast to work with and, and on such a great show. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was, I don't know exactly what happened to that show. Like <laughs> it was, it's, it's, you know, it's one of those cases, like it's, there's this awesome show or yeah. this awesome game or whatever. And then it just doesn't continue or, you know, the, you know, like, I don't know what the business, uh, I don't know if it was a merchandising thing or, right. or uh, just, you know, a network thing, but we did not get, we did not get the amount of episodes that I certainly felt that we, that yeah. we should have gotten. Right. Um, no, man, I'm right there with you. Uh, what was it? Double O Ice, man. Yeah, Double O Ice. Double O Ice. Uh, double yeah, no, I, I, I loved playing, uh, playing, uh, uh, Bobby, 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 Bobby Drake, right? The ice, the ice man. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and then strangely enough, uh, in Young Justice, I got cast as Icicle Junior. <laughs> like, I don't know what it is about it. Do I have this uh, this uh, this cold uh, thing going on? I think it, <laughs> I'm uh, it's 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 a uh, it's a weight I'm willing to bear. Right, right. So. I yeah. I had Weissman on uh for one of my episodes of Geek Buddies recently. I know right. he he was our. I think he's the guy we interviewed the most the on all our shows, yeah. right? We had, to, we had to keep coming back to him. He had too much to say. <laughs> he did. He really did. He could yeah. fill up hours upon hours of time. It was insane. Yeah. Uh, but I, he was on recently talking about all the stuff. He, and he said he, how much he enjoyed uh, bringing Young Justice back. How happy were you when it came back? I mean, just oh, as a fan and then also as an artist. Voice over artist. Yeah. This, I mean, you know, it's one of those things that rarely happens. Most often what happens is like what well, what we were just talking about. Yeah. Something's really good, and then it's just dead. Right. And there's nothing you can do. You know, it's just gone. You got to move on. Yeah. So when something you worked on that you also didn't feel get got its due, but was all but was you know super brilliant and fun, and the cast is just ridiculous. Yeah. And the writing and the the storytelling, the 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 risks that they took on that show, and then it doesn't come back. Right. It's it's a heartbreak. But if it does, like that is a that is a glorious day, and for them right. to get the chance with, you know, the the DC DC streaming service, to then come back for a for a third season like yeah. that, uh, was magical. It's incredible. It's incredible. Uh, my friend Michael Vogel wrote on it, I think, and then uh, of course I've talked to Eric Rogers about how it worked. Yeah. you were working with him. Eric and I yeah. known each other like seventeen years, so yeah, it was so I know. strange. I think, I think you're the reason I know Eric. Oh really? Oh, yeah. oh! I think, did we did we bring him we, on to one when of our we shows? Brought him, when we brought him on our show, I think was the first time I met him, and then I only got to work with him after that. Yeah, that's right. On that show that you and I worked on that still hasn't come out yet. <laughs> something Poor Eric. About, something about small and astronauts. I can't say what it is. Yeah, but no, I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, uh, I still hope that that. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it deserves. I, I heard it was great. So. I he, he I can't say what he sent me, so I'm gonna let that go. All right, Cinema Gorilla, he donated. He said, uh, "Epic interview and friendship, you two. That's for sure." Let's get Roca more into gaming. I, I'm Nintendo, <laughs> but buying a PlayStation just to play Miles and Peter. Any tips for directing actors in games? What do you like in a director? That's a great question. Thanks, Cinema. Yeah, what do you what do you like? In a, what do you look for in a director? Um, when you're doing stuff. Uh, a collaborator. Hmm. You know, somebody who's willing to 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 work with you. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I usually tell a director, if a director is like, Hey, I don't want to give you a line reading or anything. I'm like, you can give me a line reading as much as long as you let me try it, you know, two, you know, twice on my own without, yeah. you know, without immediately telling me how to do it. <laughs> and if, if I'm not giving you after two or three times what you want, let's have a conversation. Tell me what's in your head. Right. Um, I'll try it that way. We'll see if it works. We'll, 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 you know, we'll get crazy with it. Um, so definitely, I mean, it's definitely a, a uh, a group effort. Mm -hmm. um, I I love I love directors and I love working to, with directors and and it and it's always better when when we work together. Also, yeah. the director knows more about the project than I do coming into it. You know, oh, than wow. any actor coming into right, it. Right, right, of course. So I depend on the director for for context and yeah. you know just uh, everything the the whole gestalt of the of the project and I I want uh, I definitely want here's something I, that I just thought of that that I would like in a in mm. a director and that I always like it when directors do on projects uh you know that we're recording in in studio mm -hmm. uh, whether it's a game or or animation sometimes there'll be a lot of people weighing in there'll be producers and there'll right, be writers right. and sometimes they'll all be in the room I like a director who makes sure that everything goes through them 
Right. Um, so I don't, so I don't n n like not know who to listen to. If like a producer suddenly chimes in and says, Hey, could you try it? And I'm like, I don't, I don't even know who that, who that is. Should I be listening to producer writers talk to the director and then the director talks to, talks to me. Right. Um, those are always the, you know, the best relationships. And I love the input from producers and writers and I love having them in the room, Yeah. but it gets crazy when everybody's, you know, throwing in, yeah, uh, direction. So because you don't know who to follow, you don't know who to listen to, and then it yeah. starts to mess with your performance. I'm sure, which mm -hmm. is super yep. frustrating. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Little Tom fifty two says first, are you still working on dubs like Boruto at all? And how is recording at home? Is it more technical or pretty much Ooh. the same? Thanks. I've Little Tom fifty two. That is an awesome question. Allow me to, uh, to to pontificate or elaborate. Um, yes, I'm still working on dubs like Boruto. Uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, I just worked on Boruto. Don't ask me when they're going to air those episodes because I'm, again, the last person they tell anything. <laughs> uh, but yes, but we're still working on Boruto, and it's actually getting really interesting. At first, I kind of made fun of Boruto. I'm like, well, they're really milking this one, but they're exploring some cool things, um, yeah. and it's nice to have. It's nice to be playing the same character after 15 years <laughs> of doing it. Um, uh, so yeah, Sasuke is alive and well and uh, a terrible, terrible father. <laughs> but uh, recording at home is uh, it's it's more plate spinning. It's more like mm. there's I have I have had to uh, become an engineer and a videographer and uh, a tech guy and a troubleshooter. Yeah, because now I'm running it all at at home. So I've got to engineer uh, my own sessions, and thankfully I have engineers on the other end of the line who can help me with that. Right. But I'm not. You know, I, uh, I, I'm not, an, I didn't go to school for this. I didn't, you know, study. I didn't, I haven't had the years of experience. Um, and it does give you, uh, you know, a, a new respect for somebody I already had respect for the engineer, yeah. uh, because all of a sudden I'm, I'm asked to do that and I fuck up things all the time. Wow. Well, um, but engineer, what yeah. do you mean? Do you, are you recording to a yeah. video? And so you're trying to like match the video to your voice? Well, so I'm, are you I'm, doing I'm, that? I'm, I'm recording the session. Like I've got Pro Tools open, uh -huh. and I'm recording the session and trying to manage my levels and make sure I'm not getting oh. too loud. Make sure I actually hit record at the beginning because I'll tell you what, <laughs> there are a couple of times that I haven't, and um, that's embarrassing. Oh man! Uh, but um, so so all that that tech stuff, and yeah, when we're when we're dubbing, I've got yeah. to see picture. So we set up like a Zoom call on my iPad, wow. and they pipe the the video to that. And they've got their engineer on that's on you know on their end. They've got you right. know, I'm the engineer on my end. Uh, we're using a service either Source Connect or IPDTL, wow. which is a uh, high level. Uh, just you know, when I'm I'm recording, I can send huge amounts of information down the line right. to the engineer on that side, and they can record on their end. But I'm also recording on my end, so it's I've had to subscribe to new services. You know, I mean that costs yep. like a hundred bucks a month uh, to, but but it allows me to keep working. So yes, yeah. it's gotten complicated. Um, I usually have to set up tech calls before any job because they want to make sure that the tech, that everything works before we start a session. Right. So I don't get paid for any of that. That's just, you know, it's just cost of doing business these days. Right, right. And then I've got to, you know, uh, send all the files and make sure they get the files afterwards. Mm -hmm. It's a lot, and if they want voice or if they want uh, facial reference, for video games in particular, yeah, uh, I've got to make sure that I've got a good camera set up, and that I could shoot high quality video files, and that I'm lit well and in focus, and right. um, all that. So then they can use that for for reference. Um, so there's all these jobs that I never had to do, just to do the job that I normally do. Right. Uh, that right. I that I've had to learn, and I'm constantly, you know, I'm constantly dialing things in, you know, for one client or another. Right. So it's not like. Ah, oh, I've got it all set up. Good, everything's fine now. <laughs> you know, then it's it's kind. Of, let's say moving target. So yeah, yeah. So it, there's been uh, there's been a lot of uh, you know, a lot of uh, change, a lot of uh, a lot of extra work. But yeah, but it, you know, back to it. Yeah, I'm working, and that's not bad. Yeah, that's what matters. Uh, Andrew Hale says hello, Yuri. Uh, what's hey, the difference? And Andrew's uh, uh, asking uh, this. He says, uh, what's the difference between voice acting in anime like Naruto versus voice acting in video games? Do you like one over the other or do you have a preference? Thanks. Can't wait for the new Spider-Man game. Yeah. yeah. So what's Thank the difference you, here between voice acting and, in anime and voice acting in video games? Do you like one over the other? Do you have a preference? I don't know that I have a preference. Okay. I will say that, that dubbing anime 
is very technical. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you never work with any other actors at the same time. You're always solo. Yeah. And it's, it's technical in that, you know, the animation's already done. You're trying to make uh, a script that was written in, you know, and originally recorded and animated to in a different language. Right. Fit the script. Now, you know, brilliant writers have already worked on that to try to make that work. Mm -hmm. But then once the actor is saying it out loud with the timing, sometimes you got to fix things, massage things. You got to speed things up, slow it down, take a word out. Right. You know, try right. to make pauses work that don't naturally fit the English, but they did in the Japanese. Yeah. And still try to keep the, you know, the emotional integrity of that original performance. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I'm trying to do a bunch of things at once. I'm watching the <laughs> lip flap and I'm trying to time out the the dialogue. I'm trying to make it fit. And I'm also trying to remember sort of how they did it. And right. so it's a lot of, it's very technical. Yeah. Uh, it's fun uh, because you get to see the animation right away. When I do original, and when I'm recording original animation, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, John, yep. you just record and they send it off. And it takes eight months to a year before <laughs> any of that animation comes back. Exactly. We'll um, so, but uh, for, for yeah. video games, video games can be technical in a different way. Mm -hmm. uh, when I'm in the booth, when I'm in the studio, uh, depending on what type of game it is. Like if it's a call, like a Call of Duty game, yeah, it's just like we have spreadsheets. Like you get in the booth and there's an Excel spreadsheet up and they just they just start scrolling and we start you know, two, three takes of each line, go to the next one, two, three takes, yeah. different levels of intensity. Cause you know, it may be, you may be in a firefight or you may be, you know, just covert, you know, and all, right. you know trying to, uh, so, so that's, te it's technical in that way. Mm -hmm. Um, but the cool side of video games, which is something that's been changing more and more lately is we'll often get to work with other actors uh, Oh wow! at, at the same time. Okay. And sometimes on a, uh, you know, on a soundstage, we'll yeah. be doing the performance capture as well. So, I mean, that's a good time. I mean, that's one of the reasons that, that the performances in Spider-Man were as good as they were, in my opinion, because we were doing it, we were shooting it like a movie or like we were doing a play. Yeah. I was, I was acting off of other actors mm -hmm. because Bill Salyers is a genius uh, as, as he played Doc Ock for, for those of you who, uh, for those of you, John, who haven't played it yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like, Soon. I, if, if I was good in one of those scenes, it was because Bill was better. Wow, and he was right in front of me, and I and I and I had to match him, you know. That's great. so, and it was just it was just a cast full of tremendous actors. Yeah, and so it's really nice because I you know I started in theater and TV and film, and right. then found voice acting, and so it's like it's like coming full circle to get yeah. to work on a stage and for it to to be acting with other actors and you know using my body and being physical again. Mm. So that's so that's definitely. I mean, when I get to do that. For a video game yeah. that's up at the top of my because that's what i love doing i love acting with other actors and i love you know getting my my whole body into it for yeah. sure well speaking of technical stuff i gotta ask a favor of you man that mic yeah. keeps hitting your zipper and it's causing mm. a lot of clicks on this end Boom. so can we zip okay. it up can we or do yeah. i don't know what you can do there to make sure it doesn't hit this yeah all right i think that would right. oh look at that you look great now even more oh, there. <laughs> so I look a little more like James Bond. And like, yes, like that's absolutely. Uh, yeah. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, yeah, here we go. We got two more that rolled through. Let me jump these on. Apache uh, right 2895 says, what was your favorite experience during uh, voicing Sasuke, our emo lord and savior from <laughs> Naruto? Uh, hold on one second. I'm going to do I'm gonna do you one better, John. Okay. Uh, you can bear with me. Oh, hello. A little cheesecake. Clothes, I like it. A little cheesecake. I dig <laughs> It'll it. be even better. And it's starting to get a <laughs> I love it. Hello. Okay. All right. All right. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Thank you very um, much for doing that, man. What would Sasuke say? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sasuke has been, you know, Sasuke has been really fun and really interesting because I've gotten to play him for 15 years. Mm. Um, and when I when I got cast as Sasuke, bef like before Sasuke, I was basically just playing like very you know upstanding bright young heroes, and and Sasuke's our emo lord and savior, Apache. So uh, we we all know that. So so it was a, it was a, it was an interesting turn for me, and it was different and super cool to get to do that. Yeah, um, and explore that part of me and like dig deep for you know what what makes me emo and mad angry sad and 
um, and vengeful, which is, you know, which is everything that, that, that Sasuke is. Right. Right. Uh, but as far as my, like my favorite experience, besides, I think besides being able to do it for 15 years, cause I can't say any other character that I've played for 15 years in my uh -huh. career, uh, which my career is almost about 15 years old. <laughs> um, uh, but, uh, I mean, the, the amazing cast I get to work with. And like I said, we don't get to record together generally. Right. So it's not like we're working together. I mean, the directors I've had on have been great. Um, the, but the family, sort of the Naruto family that we've built is tremendous. But I will say going to conventions and seeing how much people love and hate Sasuke. And, mm -hmm. I, and I, I love the haters as much as I love the lovers because Sasuke is a polarizing character. Mm -hmm. um, I think seeing how like seeing cosplayers play all the different Sasuke's yeah. and just seeing how much people love Sasuke um, has been the highlight probably. Yeah. Is he your favorite character that you've ever, is he, is he your number one? I can't, you know me, John, yeah, I can't yeah, pick I a number know. one. I know you're so sweet. I can't you're pick so, another, you can't do that. No, I just, I just, you know, on some days I feel like, like, you know, this character is my number one. And then, or, right. you know, that character is my number one on a different day. It's, it's hard to, like even just picking, like it's hard to pick between Superman and Spider Man. Like, how do you? Yeah. Pick, how do you pick? Like, I can't. Yeah. I grew up reading comic books. I'm a big nerd. I can't pick between Superman and Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Justin Toner says, Yuri, what was it like working with Laura Bailey, who voiced Mary Jane on Spider Man? Big fan of her and Critical Role. Thought you two had great chemistry. Keep up the great work. Oh, wow, Justin, awesome. thank you so much. I mean, Laura's Laura's a dream. I, you know, I've known Laura since. Um, since we, we all were doing anime together. Mm. Um, so it's been really amazing to see just her, you know, I mean, she's just, she's, she started like here and was like, Psh! yeah. And there's no end in sight. Um, so, so it's always fun to work with her. We've known each other long enough that it's, uh, it's always fun and, and relaxed and, and natural. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And critical role. <laughs> I mean, talk about things that start and just, and just keep going. Right. So it's like so like Laura, it was like that, and then there was uh, she jumped on the critical role, and now it's you know it's like light speed in that direction. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, I'm I'm glad you're a critter. Uh, that is uh, that is truly. I mean, you know what Matt and the, the whole gang have done. Yeah. Is truly glorious. They outlived the channel they were born on. Yeah. Which yeah. is insane to think yeah. about. Yeah, they outlived it and then just built their own. <laughs> exactly. Like, we'll exactly. just we'll just do that. We can do that. Just, we, we got this. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, let's see. How do we uh, want to do this? Yeah. yeah exactly. Uh, do it for cash. Uh, sent in. He goes, holy crap. Yuri. You're a Sasuke? I started yeah. watching the dub in 07. But when I caught up, I switched to sub. Uh, I, sometimes, I guess. I love yeah. the high level of emotional intelligence in Naruto. Love your work as Spidey, too. You did more than justice to my favorite superhero. Uh, well, that must be great to you. hear. That's a that's a big deal. I right. I really appreciate that. I mean, you know, and honestly, I I watch I I prefer uh, subs to to dubs when I watch something for the first mm. time. And then if mm -hmm. I really like it and I want to go back to it, I'll sometimes I'll try the uh, the dub. Yeah. But uh, but I'm I'm subs over dub. I just love to hear the original language and something. Uh, and I don't mind reading subtitles. Yeah, me too. Uh, but uh, thank you. Yeah, because because Spider Man was, I was so nervous going into Spider Man because Abe just because I'm a you know old school comic book nerd. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I felt the weight of what I was doing, mm -hmm. um, but also because I know that there's so many fans, you know, I, and, and I, I couldn't help, but think that I was just going to get it wrong. Like <laughs> I was going to go out there. I was going to fuck up Spider-Man for a whole new generation. <laughs> so I was, I was worried, but the, the thing that I had to keep going back to, which, which always helped ground me was I, the team at, at Insomniac mm -hmm. loved the project too much. Like everybody who was working on it. Yeah was a spider-man fan and you could feel the love and i just knew that they were not going to let me fail yeah so i always had to go when i when i got nervous i was like brian into is not going to let me fail he just won't it's, it's too important to him so. yeah well that's i mean that's the thing that comes through um from the limited amount of exposure i had to the game because we played it obviously when i was at collider we played a few times yeah. just uh there it was incredible to see the attention of de to detail and also the respect they had for the world yeah. and still willing to take bold choices with yeah. some of the characters and and the storylines yeah. and what have you that was so surprising because that is 
those are three tight ropes you're walking at the same time mm -hmm. in three different locations and it was incredible to see that happen yeah yeah it was it was it was magic and that's that's another one of those families i just love that family and i mm -hmm. can't wait to to get back with them <laughs> I, I know you don't have a favorite but was that like top five favorite experience you ever had on a project yeah probably <laughs> i don't think it's good i don't think i have to think too hard about that one okay i mean i got to work on it for for three years and it's yeah. spider-man and it turned out so well I, you know and i just love the people who worked on it and i just i just you know love how how people responded to the game because because the last time that i worked with insomniac right before that yeah uh was on a game called sunset overdrive an xbox game john oh yeah well and, get that then. and it was uh I thought it was going to be like the greatest selling game of all time. Like when we were making it, I'm like, this is the game the world needs. And that it didn't do well. Right. You know, for, for whatever business reason you want to, you want to say, yeah, I mean, who knows? Uh, and I was like, Oh, but so, so to love something, you can, you can still love something even if other people don't love it. Right. But to love something and then have, you know, the players respond so positively to something. Yeah. Yeah. And to feel like, yeah, we nailed it. Like we got it. We got, we got something that is so hard when you look at Spider-Man throughout the years, right? It's hard to dial it all the, all the little bits that you need to make Spider-Man good. Yeah. Um, and some, you know, some games have gotten some of them. Some games have gotten a lot of them. Some games haven't gotten any of them. <laughs> um, but, but you know, it just, it was, it was like one of those perfect storm games where right. the writing was great and the cast they assembled was great. And the the you know just the the tech on it the you know the the, the gameplay was great and the, yeah. the animation the cutscenes and just the the mechanics of it all yeah. just came together and she could complain about some things but but overall it's just it was just it just it just worked you know yeah yeah that's awesome yeah uh, John Lee says I know you can't say much but how is the development going on Marvel Spider Man sequel Loved your performance and was almost in tears at the end scene with Peter and Aunt May. Don't want to give away too much, but yeah. that was, yeah. Well, I wish I had more to give away <laughs> because they were working on, uh, you know, on uh, on on the Miles game. Yeah, and because of the pandemic, uh, I, I keep waiting for the phone to ring. Like I know mm. they're, I know they've got to be crafting a, you know, an amazing script. Right. But I, I, I have nothing to tell you. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> uh, but but thank you for uh, that that scene with with Aunt May. Um, Nancy Lenari played Aunt May, and you know I'll, I'll always remember that day. I remember you know going in. I'm like I don't know how this is gonna go. Right. I just don't know what's gonna happen. And that's were you scary. acting with her in that scene, or yeah. were you? Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Every, every yeah everybody everybody was there, and I you know she's mm -hmm. she's mostly she said it was one of the easiest days she's ever had. She just had to lay there and you know <laughs> <laughs> the hospital bed. But um, but that scene would not have been as good and as you know emotionally connected uh yeah. if if nancy hadn't been there with me if i'd just been acting in a vacuum i'm sure i could have come up with something right i'm right. sure it would have been fine but it was great because she was there right you know right and and i love that we we got to do that for this game yeah have you ever thought about writing your own writing my own game yeah i mean we know steve yeah. Steve Jaros, you know, he wrote yeah, Flight's no, game. Yeah, no, I know. So. And he's, he, is a, he is a genius that way. Yeah. Um, now, you know, I had talked to, because I've written for, you son I've of written a bitch. for stage do and something. sketch and film and stuff like that. Don't make me get angry, man, because I'll make you do something. You know I will. <laughs> I know, I know you will. <laughs> and I won't be able to say no, because it's you, John. Um, I, you know, I, it's funny. I had just reached out to a friend of mine who worked at Telltale. Oh about a game like I wanted this was this was right before Telltale <laughs> went under um and I was trying to figure out a way that we could do a game where if you, John you remember the movie Enemy Mine of course yes. are you kidding yeah. okay. oh, please Louis Gossett Jr. Cinephiles Dennis yet? Quaid please yeah. I love that have you done it on Cinephiles yet uh we have not done that on Cinephiles but yeah I I won a Schmodown uh championship defense getting that question right it helped us keep a lead and we ended up winning the match because i would i had waited years for that question to come up in a movie trivia match that i was doing and when yeah. it came up i just smiled my face off and answered it right off the bat i love that movie so damn much. right me too yeah um and i had wanted to pitch some sort of game that was kind of like enemy mine 
but it was like blue state, red state, you know, civil war situation. And two oh, guys shit. get, um, get, get thrown together. Right. And we, and at first they're enemies because they were basically born enemies. Right. And throughout the course of the game and choices you make and things you learn about the other oh, person, wow. learn that you've got a lot more in common, uh, than you think. Yeah. And they, they you know, and they end up friends. So, because I because I love to use I love to use these platforms for for change and for yeah. good and mm -hmm. and I and I do believe that there's you know that we've we've gotten into a terrible place where mm -hmm. we can't even talk to each other and yet I believe that deep down inside we all want the same things mm -hmm. like we want to feel safe we want to feel loved we want our our family to feel safe yeah um like I mean I'm sure that's like everybody starts there. Mm -hmm. And then starts making decisions based off that. So I know there's common ground there. It's just gotten it's just gotten away from us. Yeah. And so I, I I'd started to talk to a friend at Telltale about uh, that, and he didn't know exactly how we could make that happen. But he was going to start connecting me to some people over there to see if I, and then <sighs> and then Telltale went away. So I don't know. I don't know. It was and it was a, it was a loose idea. It wasn't like I had created right, a Bible right, right. for it and scripted it out and everything. But yeah. um. But because I've written in many other mediums, I thought, God, this is just something that that I feel I feel could I don't know could be good. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think so. It sounds, sounds a lot like the, like Defiant ones, the old Tony Curtis, which of course, what yeah. Enemy of Mine was based on, the old yeah. Tony Curtis Denis Potier mm -hmm. uh, uh, film. Christopher Cowan says, "Can we get a super animation game time dance out?" <laughs> I think we could come up with something, right? <laughs> Hold on, let me see. Oh. Let me see if I can bring something up. for that. <laughs> oh. Son of a bitch. Wow, it's been a long time. I didn't know anyone knew that show up with us, man. I didn't know it's been so long. That was some of my favorite. That was some oh. of the favorite, the, the, you know, my favorite parts of the show is <laughs> dancing in and dancing out. Uh, I, I, is there, is there, I don't, I'd have to find the. I, I think we're going to have to do it live. Oh, wow. Fuck it, we'll do it live. <laughs> We'll do it. I don't. I don't think any of the shows are still on the. On, they're not on YouTube anywhere, are they? I, I think I, so. Yeah, I'm looking for it right now. I don't see, and I don't remember what the um, what the uh, EDM thing was. What the track was? Yeah. Do you remember? I do not remember uh, what the track was. I probably. I wish I had I that I had still. It. I don't even know if I've got it oh. on the computer. Um, but that would be yeah. It was that dubstep. Oh uh, Thing. right right dubstep right um oh yeah i don't you know we were lucky to when we did uh orbital redux for legendary um we right. luckily had it in our contract that if they didn't uh end up producing a season two yeah that we would uh that the rights would reverse back to us so so luckily we've still got all our episodes <laughs> um and i'm i'm trying we're, we're trying to get them together so we can get them out there on like netflix or something like that just so everybody can wow. watch the show it would it won't be the same as watching it live obviously but right man that was one of the craziest best things i've ever done dude it was so much fun cuz i mean we we started we really kind of honed ourselves and I'll, we'll get to the outro christopher Corn. if i can find it we'll mm. get to the outro but like it was one of the and if not honed. if not christopher we'll do we'll do a little bit live We'll fuck it. We'll do it. Well, what you do, you'll play the music in your head, and and we will dance you out. <laughs> Absolutely. But like it was one of those things. Like we we had kind of made our bones on cast of characters together. We really had a nice vibe, and uh, yeah. so I mean that's some of my favorite favorite fucking memories of anything I did and still do nowadays. It was getting to sit down with all these great voiceover artists, and they're just chill dudes i remember and ladies i remember roger craig smith getting a couple of beers bringing over some fucking nachos yeah. and getting on the mic with us i remember that because that brewery that was next yeah. door that's right that's with right. cast of characters over there at uh, geek nation and then like all the and the phil lamar in the studio i mean talking yeah. to andrea romano yeah. and having her ask oh. me to send my uh a reel in which i never did but like to, it was incredible to get so much access to these people and sit yeah. down with them and have conversations with them. And then mm -hmm. taking that over into super animation game time and getting to interview people like Dwight Schultz. Yeah. Uh, and uh, of course, bringing my friend Eric in and then a couple other, and a yeah. bunch of other people. Yeah. It was a blast. Yeah. Yeah. It was a good time. <laughs> I miss those times. I miss those times, John. How come you haven't done any, like I, I you know, we, we couldn't keep going. What we're doing was it's just, it's just working everything and being a dad. It just kind of stops you, yeah. huh? Yeah, yeah, I guess. 
And then, you know, it was it was nice to like have a studio we could go to that was always right. set up and that we could produce at a high level. I just, yeah. you know, I mean, you and I recorded a bunch of, you know, just in my my office in my garage. <laughs> but <laughs> but it was That's nice true. for a while to be able to go over there to uh, uh, to uh, Geek uh, Geek and Sundry, or, Geek yeah. and Sundry, yeah, and uh, and to have that that setup, you know. Yeah, it was the best. Yeah. I'm trying to find it. I don't know if I can find it. I don't know if I can find it. Hey, wait, hold on. Is this it? Fuck yeah. All right, here we go. What? Uh, I'm good at what I do, my man. Let's see. Yeah, I, I know that. Uh, all right, Christopher Cow, we're going to give you a little something. Let me see if I can share the screen. Sean showed me how to do this earlier. Let me see if the old man can figure it out. Uh, share the audio, relative free music. All right, here we go. Let's put... Let me play it. You can see if you can hear this, Yuri. Okay. All right. <laughs> I think this is it. Hold on. Let me download it real quick. Oh, my God. And then I'll just play it. Right? Uh, all right. How does this work? Can you just... Can you go backwards? There we go. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's the stuff. <laughs> oh. oh. So good. That was the best, man. That was fun doing that every time at the end uh, of the I show. Know. Know. Oh, thanks for that. Thank you for that, Christopher. I appreciate you said you that. It, John. You still got the moves. <laughs> this old man can still move. Ah, I love the comments. What is happening? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. that is, you had to be there. You, you be really there. did. Yeah. It was the best. Uh, and I'm let's glad some see. of you were, because that wouldn't have come up if, if you hadn't been. So. It's true. It's true. All right. Sony Pony says, uh, hi, John and Yuri. Big fan of both y'all's work. Thank you. Uh, Yuri, who among your game voice acting peers do you find most impressive or inspirational? Roka, you will love the Spider-Man game. It's the most fun I've ever had just getting around an open world map. Yeah, I can't wait. Um, oh, yeah. Who do you find the most I, impressive or inspirational? I don't know. I, you know, the, the community is so amazing and so talented and so giving, um, you know, coming from, coming from film and film and TV as I was when I got into voice acting. Yeah. It's a different, that's a different crew, man. Everybody's really protective of their work and they're like, like, you know, dodgy about everything and wondering how you're going to try to take advantage of them. And it's so, so to come into a community that is so full of hugely talented people, but who are also really, really generous uh, has been extremely humbling. Yeah. Um, okay. and, and glorious, like a great place to, to live and, and play. Yeah. Uh, but as far as like people, I mean, I, I meet them and work with them all the time and I'm, and I, and I meet more and more people all the time. Some who are just getting into it, who are just huge talents and, right. um, and inspirational and some who, you know, have been doing it forever. Like Rob Paulson, yeah. you know, like, yeah, Rob is like, you know, he's, he's Rob, oh, Rob, he's dude, um, he's Oh, but yeah. but you know people who are hugely talented and also super kind like Roger yeah. Yeah. like Steve Bloom you know right, right. uh Tatashore Tatashore good yeah. lord that guy yeah um but uh yeah um you know I'm I'm working on a show with uh with with somebody who's who's newer to the to the acting part, but she's, you know, she's been an engineer most of the time. Like I knew her from engineering wow. sessions. Wow. And um, Judy Lee. And she's like, I okay. can't say what we're working on yet, but hopefully like, and she like, I'm like, Oh my God. Like, I, I mean, Judy, you're always cool, but like, you're yeah. like, you're, you're really good in this. Like <laughs> I keep having to remind her. Cause she's like, Hey, no, 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 no. Cause I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I just, I'm just starting out. Like you're the, I'm like, no, 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 no. Trust me. You're, this is, you know, you're, you're killing it. Um, <laughs> Awesome. And you know Naji on uh, who who's on on Miles Morales. Yeah. Um, uh, people like Bill Salyers who who is so hugely talented and so kind. Um, man, I could just go see. That's the problem with this community. 
That's the yeah. problem with this community. <laughs> They're all too damn talented, too damn nice. I could, you know, I could go on all night. Yeah. About yeah. about people who I love working with people who when I show up and they're in the room, I'm like, oh, fuck yeah, this is going to be great. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, Did, has Najee come to you? Did he come to you when he got the Miles Morales part? Be like, hey, man, what can I expect? Blah, blah, blah. Or hey, kind of like, uh, you know, kind of had the chops already in his mind that he could do it. I mean, he, yeah, you know, he had the, the confidence for it, I mm. think. But, 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 you know, he was still fairly new to it. Right. And, uh, and it was funny how, the game, you know, relationship and the real life relationship had some some parallels. You know, he's like, <laughs> "Hey, bro, you know, uh, what do I? What, what can I expect? Like, hey, how do you make a? How do you make it sound like you're swinging while you're doing the line? What do you do? You know, right, <laughs> right. I had to come up with stuff for that. Um, so, so that was, um, that was that was that was really nice. I, I love Najee. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is. I, you know, it, it's constantly. It's, it's it's constantly stunning the the people that I get to work with and how awesome they are. It's just such a great yeah, such a great family. I could you know I could keep thinking about it and just keep coming up with with more names. Yeah, I'm really. trying to I'm trying to get Rob again. Yeah, just because Animaniacs is coming out. So yeah, why not sit down with him? How insane is that? The trailer that, was going, hilarious. Yeah, going back to that that whole thing where you're like. Uh, you know, like how, how Young Justice came back and we didn't mm -hmm. think it was going to come back and what comes back and what doesn't, you know, what right. what gets a second life and what doesn't. Yeah. That's, Animaniacs, it's a huge one. It's huge. Right. right. Uh, what, is there something that you've been circling on your on your calendar or is there is there a project that you haven't quite got yet or is there a role you haven't played? I mean, as you said, you're a big, big nerd into the world of comics. Yeah. Is there yeah. something that yet you still haven't well, played yet? <laughs> Well, you know, I always audition for Batman because, like I said, you know, <laughs> in my head, it, my my voice sounds like Batman's voice, um, and I've never done that. Batman or the yeah. Joker would be would be huge. Oh, I'm yeah, a the Joker, yeah, right? I'm a huge, you know, like old school Doctor Who fan. Like I've always oh play, yeah, I've always wanted to play the Doctor, um, but I, you know, I'm probably probably too old for a companion. But you never know. Um, the doctor, like that, the guy, yeah. that old guy from Law and Order UK. He's one of the companions that's with right. Jody Whittaker's doctor. So yeah, that's know. right. Yeah, you're not that, um, you're near that old. So oh, that's yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> Moon Knight, Moon Knight's Moon Knight's <sighs> finally coming in big these days because uh, you know the 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 uh, Disney Plus show. Yeah, they're gonna do with with uh, Oscar uh, Oscar Isaac. Yeah, Oscar Isaac. Yeah. Uh, I mean, come on, people! Come on, people! Uh, get on board! Yeah. No. No, I've been like like Moon Knight has always been. And I guess it makes sense, but like if I'm a huge Batman fan, I mean, you know, Moon Knight is Marvel's Batman. Right. It's not a, it's not that much of a jump. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, but there's, there's been some really interesting storylines in the last few years, but uh, it's yeah. like, I've always wanted to do like explore that. And, and at least it, it seems like uh, people are starting to, to talk about Moon Knight now in, in yeah. more, you know, the whole pop culture world sense. So, so we'll see. People have an illusion about, voiceover and video like did the spider-man thing set you up or was it just you know the day because some people like the guy who did assassin's creed got really set up was spider-man more just kind of a situation where you know you're getting you get you're doing what you can to kind of bring this thing to life and there isn't what there was in the past you know some of the some of the uh, payouts or whatever what do you mean exactly like so when you say set up yeah, yeah, I I heard. Uh, well, I heard from a couple of people who are who are, uh, and I don't know if it's true or not, right? Yeah. But yeah. I heard from a couple of people like this guy got Assassin's Creed, and by the third game, he was able to buy a beach house in Malibu. Oh. And I, I, have they yeah. adjusted the cuts now? I think from from I, what I remember, because everything's gone down. Everything's gone yeah. Down. I think everything's. I mean, no. I mean, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not, you know, living in Malibu now because I did Spider Man. I mean, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, you know, I got I got paid well, and it was a regular yeah. gig, you know, a regular gig for three years. So that was, I mean, you know, sometimes it was we were working, you know, a day a, a month. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, it was. I mean, I mean, I got paid, but I, I didn't get. I mean, no, I yeah. mean, I'm not. Uh, you can't retire on it. Is what no, I can't. No, I can't. Yeah. I can't retire on it. Um, so I'm trying to get people to I understand want to at this point, but yeah, but yeah, but, but it is. But I will say because it was the success that it was yeah i think it has affected some of the jobs i have gotten oh like sometimes sometimes i'll get cast in something and we'll get to the end of the session yeah and the the writer the producer the director or whatever will say 
hey, by the way, I just wanted to let you know, I oh, fucking Spider Man was great, you know. And and then I think afterwards, I'm like, oh my god, did I get cast in this thing because you liked Spider Man? I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, maybe. It opens doors. It, yeah. So Nothing I think I think there, I think it has definitely opened a few doors. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I, I wish like again, again, I got paid well, yeah. but I did not, uh, you know, to do the thing that I love, which is you know the the right. greatest. Yeah. Uh, but that I got paid at all for it is, is a dream. <laughs> um, but no, I absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah no, I mean, I'm, I'm still I'm still in my my little 900 square foot house that I've lived <laughs> in for 13 years. It's a nice house. <laughs> uh, uh, there's there's been a lot. I mean, like I I got let go from William Morris early this year because they shut down. Well, they the, shut down their whole scale. They department. did. They that only the celebrity people job. were allowed. I know it was, it was the first time. I, like I still don't have a voiceover agent. I, I'm booking work on my own or whatever. But like, it's uh, weird to kind. Of, let's talk about that. Okay. Are you joking? Don't joke. Let's talk about that. I have okay. an agent. Why wouldn't I? Okay. Brother, why wouldn't I recommend you to my agent? Oh, well, thank you very much. I mean, I got a new mic, a new $400 mic and everything. What? Come on. Yeah. Um, but oh, that's very kind of you. Thank you. Yeah. But like, but it was, but oh, so you've seen so many, <laughs> you've seen so many changes going on in the world of voiceover. Now it's when one of these businesses that was impacted pretty hard by the COVID situation. Um, and so yeah. you say, you know, you're lucky to still be working. You actually are because there's so much uh, that was that the, that happened here that shut. It was across the industry. You know, yeah. the first place they looked at a lot of these agencies, the first place they looked was the voiceover and print places to start cutting who they could which cut. Is, it was insane. It's weird to me because you're right. When, when lockdown happened mm. and production shut down, uh, even even the voiceover stuff got like everything closed as as people sort of regrouped to figure out how they could, you know, continue their workflow yeah. in a different way. And I think a lot of my pro like it, it got it got it got slow for two three months. Like it it was it right. was pretty like next to nothing because I think a lot of places were trying to wait it out. Yeah, and they were like yeah. maybe maybe this will be over in a couple of months and we can just go back to business as usual. We don't have to think about how we have to change thing. Right. And once they realized it was going to go on longer, they're like okay. How can we keep going? Right. And thankfully, you know, with with enough people with recording equipment at home and you know a quiet place that they can record, yeah. and you know high speed, you know the internet connection, that is all you needed to keep it going. Right. You didn't need to go into a studio necessarily. I would prefer to go into a studio. I can't wait to get back into the studio. Oh, of course. Um, and to not have to you know engineer my own sessions <laughs> and all that, and constantly wonder if I'm messing everything up, but. <laughs> I, uh, we, we, we were able to continue like shows that I was already working on kept going. They figured out yeah. and they kept going. Yeah. Um, there's some animated shows I was working on for Netflix and we were already in production and they just figured it out. They were, you know, a month down trying to figure it out. And then, and then we kept yeah. going and they have found a way to do it. Uh, animation, unlike, you know, where you have, you know, uh, you know, on, on camera production, like TV and film stuff yeah. where you've got a large group of people that has to be in the same workspace together right. they found out very quickly that, oh you know animation and games we don't necessarily we could do everybody can compartmentalize mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so i think a lot of that stuff not only did it continue but probably a lot of projects got off the ground because you know netflix needs to fill slots and yeah, everybody needs yeah. to so probably a lot of and yeah, i bet you'll see another i'm you know I'm, i don't i don't know anything but i bet you'll see a lot more animated stuff you know in the next year hmm just because okay. that's what people have been able to stay in production on. Right, right. See, yeah. damn it. One time I don't have an agent. Um, Oscar Flores says, Yuri, love your Spider Cop performance, <laughs> but my favorite of yours is actually Simon in Gurren Lagan. How yeah. was your experience on that? Oh, man. First, first of all, Spider Cop thanks you. <laughs> Spider Cop leans into the microphone to make it oh it's actually the microphone is here um yeah you know, spider cop is one of my you know they 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 when when uh, uh ben arfman who wrote the spider cop stuff it was part of a tutorial thing um when he wrote that nobody thought like he he, he, he like he loved he was just trying to make just trying to shake up tutorial stuff yeah yeah and he wrote that and they're like yeah well this isn't going to work but we'll record it and see what happens and it became like the best like I think Spider Cop <laughs> deserves his own DLC, but <laughs> anyway. Um, but uh, Simon in uh, in Gurren Lagann, I'll tell you what. Uh, as as both an actor in dubs and somebody who consumes anime, 
Mm -hmm. uh, it is still one of my favorite shows, both to have worked on and to watch. It has, it's beautiful. It's Gynax. I mean, they know how to really make something look colorful and beautiful yeah. and hit you in the heart and have a great soundtrack. And like, it is so, it's another one of those perfect storm things. Like that show yeah. comes together on every level. Yeah. Um, and I, I love Simone and he goes through this massive change and any actor will tell you, you know, they're looking for, they're looking for an arc, you know, over the course yeah. of the thing. And Simone definitely gets an arc. Yeah. Uh, it can be heartbreaking at times, but, but it's so good. Thank you, Oscar. I'm, I'm really glad. Uh, you're a fan too because there you go also me uh, uh let's see. duck developer said love the chat guys yuri are there many of your vo colleagues who desire to break into live action acting for example i noticed troy baker's mile-long voice credits and no live action roles like you he has a face for live action thank you yeah uh, yeah no uh uh but uh but troy even started out in uh there you can see Troy, and I, I don't remember what. Ooh. I mean, Troy and I actually did a movie together. <laughs> um, <laughs> and for you, yeah, for you, yeah, critters out there as well. It's it's me, Troy, Travis Willingham, and Liam O'Brien. Uh, the Phoenix, the Phoenix incident. Uh, you can uh, probably get it on Amazon or iTunes. Wow, it's a found, a found footage uh, UFO movie that we uh, we all. Oh shot yes, I yeah. remember that. I have yeah. that one. Yeah. So. Uh, so, and, and, and Troy did, uh, he did a, a thing with, oh, it was, it was a Western with like Carl Urban and, uh, oh. uh, I forget okay. what it was anyway. Anyway, but he, yeah, he did. Uh, I mean, I think, you know, we all come from everybody's got, I've found that everybody in this business has their own twisty path. So that mm -hmm. was one of the things that was on our show always came up, John, yep. Yep. was everybody had a different path here. Some yeah. people started in stand up, and some people started as musicians and right, some right. people started in, in theater and some people started straight, straight into VO or, yeah. you know, through, through comedy, sketch comedy, whatever. Uh, so, but a lot of us came from theater and TV and film. Mm -hmm. So you'll find, you'll find on camera credits uh, for, for, for Troy Baker, for sure. <laughs> um, they're, they're in there. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta dial down his IMDb, you know, page <laughs> for them, but they're, but they're there. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, and and some of us, I think, when we when we find success in voice acting, we're like, oh, you know, this is this is really all I need. Right. I still love to I still love to make movies. Like I think I'm entering my Elijah Wood phase of my career, where all I want to do is just make like uh, independent horror movies. Wow, that is all. I miss being on set. I love being mm -hmm. on set. It's mm -hmm. one of the reasons that my wife and I formed our production company was so that we could create our own web series and films and things like that. Right. Um, so, but a lot of my time, thankfully, you know, because, you know, when you're acting, it's, it's not like a guaranteed nine to five job. Right. Uh, you know, thankfully I have, I've been working a lot in, in voiceover and in, you know, games and animation and, yeah. uh, and that, uh, that is both fulfilling uh, and pays the rent and, uh, you know, takes up a lot of my time, but, but I love, and I will still step out and do, uh, on camera stuff, you know, for for friends' films or yeah. you know, the odd the odd little weird, you know, co star or guest star on a TV show. Um, although I've been doing less of that, um, I would I'd still I'm still writing scripts and you know I've still got plans to mm -hmm. to do things. So it's still something that I love doing and I find very fulfilling. Like yeah. that fulfills me in a different way than voice acting does. That fulfills me in a different way than theater does. You know, sort right, of a live right. performance or right. sketch comedy. I love all of those things and they each sort of are a part of the puzzle for me. Yeah. Um, so when I don't get to do something like I haven't done a play in, I think, I think since Sagan was born. So like four years wow. Wow. Um, and I miss it. Like I miss, mm -hmm. I miss that. I'm getting, I'm getting the, I'm getting the itch, yeah. but uh, yeah, no, I just want to make an, you know, the kinds of movies that I like to like, I, I like, you know, genre stuff. I like sci-fi and yeah. horror and action and, you know, yeah. thrillers. Like that's, those are the kind of movies I want to make. And I love, the camaraderie of being on set and being and like independent film stuff, like mm -hmm. where you're uncomfortable on set. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> you're cold and you don't have enough. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm getting older and I'm sure the cold <laughs> thing I could probably give, you know, give up, but uh, yeah. you know, you're cold. You, you, you're not sure if, you know, I mean, there's no craft service. And I mean, now yeah. with, you know, COVID rules, there's probably not going to be craft service anyway. Yeah. But, right. uh, but I miss that. I love being on set. I love troubleshooting on yeah. set. I love telling stories that way. So, um, but, but some of my voice actor friends 
could could care less about that. Yeah. And some of them some of them do want to, and some of them, you know, harbor a great desire to. Um, and and sometimes we find ways to work together. Right. Like most of I would say uh, every everyone save Talison from critical role for all you critters out there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we uh, all had had time on our web series shelf life. Yeah. Uh, which is basically which is a web series that you can find on YouTube. Um, which is basically Toy Story. It's like a live action Toy Story, but we said fuck a lot more. <laughs> um, and 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 the only reason and and while Talison didn't make it onto that show, he's in a short film of ours called Topsy McGee versus the Sky Pirates, right? Uh, which is this silent film steampunk action thing that uh, that we did that Terrence uh, the star of. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so yeah, so some some of us came from that, some of us didn't, and some you know some of us you know bounce back and forth. I, yeah. I still love it. I still love it. It just takes uh, time. We've got something coming up that dropped t- tomorrow. Drops tomorrow. The Doctor Who animated thing. Did you see that? No, I've been totally out of the loop. We get a what? we get a Doctor Who animated tomorrow. Yeah, hold on. Let me take a look here and give you the right because I thought you might know. Uh, I know we've got we've got Miles Morales coming in, in two days. Yes, and on the same day, we've also got Bug Snacks. Which if, uh, is another game that's coming out that that's a lot of fun that I worked on. That me and Roger and Sam Regal, um, who oh, else? I mean, nice. It's a great cast. It's a great cast. You know, Roger left LA. Yeah, I, I it's right so out. yeah, it's so funny. I yeah. was just like, oh shit! So I'm not the only one who's getting out, who's oh, getting no, out no, of no. the city. Yeah, and, yeah, and and when you think about you know with the the the, the fires and the air and the you know yeah all, all all the stuff going on. I mean, I'm trying to raise a kid. I'm like, don't don't think that I'm not. Like looking around, going, yeah. what would be a place that I? Could... <laughs> yeah, I we love, love it here, man. I, but I love, I love Los. I mean, San San Diego. Mm-hmm. I'll bet. Um, but I yeah. love. I mean, there's certain things I love about Los Angeles, and certain things I hate about it. But yeah. you know, I'm a big cinephile. I'm a big movie buff, as yeah. you know well. And it's, I mean, I love that about Los Angeles. Yeah. I don't know. Hashtag fuck Grandpa Joe. Hashtag, Hashtag yeah. fuck Grandpa Joe. That's right. <laughs> I still think about that because I showed my kid. Uh, Willy Wonka <laughs> recently, and um, and all I could think of was fuck, hashtag fuck Grandpa Joe the whole time. Oh my god! Still one of my favorite episodes. Oh uh, yeah, so it's a five part CGI animation series that's launched. It's called Daleks, and it'll be available free for fans to watch on the we on the Doctor Who YouTube channel. Uh, and it's called yeah, it's Time Lord Victorious Daleks. The Daleks plundering of the archive of exterminate (laughs) the Daleks' plundering of the archive of Islos unearthed something ancient and deadly soon Scaro is under attack and the Dalek Emperor is on the run can the Daleks defeat their adversaries and regain their planet even with the help from an old enemy will this be the end of the Daleks it's written by James Goss and created by Salford based animator Studio Liddell wow Davros you know, every time I hear of Davos, the meeting, that business meeting that they have, all I can think of oh, is yeah. Davros, um, the, the 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 Dalek Lord. Yeah, um, yeah, that's wow. So yeah, just letting you know that's uh, popping for, up. Thanks tomorrow. for letting me know. Yeah, uh, Brian Brown says, "What are you currently watching across the board, Yuri? I'm highly promoting Jujutsu Kaisen. It's a sleeper that, that's uh, uh, going to grow in popularity. Uh, yeah, what are you are you watching something now? Uh, I'm not. Uh, let's see." Like I, I, I told you, I just finished Giri Haji, which is a duty shame on Netflix. That's a live yeah. action thing. I'm not sure if uh, Jujutsu Kaisen is uh, is an anime. I I will take that. I'm actually going to note that. Thank you, Bryant. Um, <laughs> because uh, I'm going to make note of that because I want something new to watch. Yeah. There Jujutsu you go. Kaisen. Okay. There you go, Bryant. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Um, and I, if I don't write it down, yeah, I'm you'll going forget. To... Oh, trust me, I get it. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let me bring okay. in. Let me bring in Sean, who's been waiting to ask a question. Oh no, did you want to finish that answer? Or are you good? Yeah, you're not watching. Right, let me bring in Sean. Sean, the producer on the show here. What's up, bud? You got a hey, question John? to ask? Hi, how's it going, Yuri? Sean, Yuri, Hi. Yuri, Sean. <laughs> nice, nice to meet you. Uh, so my question is, you you mentioned earlier that you're a uh, Superman fan. So I know they've been rumors about a Superman game for years, kind of like how they've been doing the Batman series. Yeah. Um, if 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 a Superman game ever were to come about, 
How would if and if you got cast to play Superman slash Clark yeah. Kent, how would you approach it, and what kind of storyline would you want to kind of see them do? Hmm. If you I don't know. Brothers, I mean, you know. like like Superman has had so many different, and you know we've gotten a lot of good Superman stories in uh, you know DC uh, direct to to video. Uh, like DTV mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh, movies yeah. over the last, like Red Sun was awesome. Oh my God. Um, and Roger was so good in yeah. Red Sun. Dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Um, yes. But, uh, oh man, I, I don't know. As, I would love to see any, any Superman game. Um, but I'm sure, you know, people run into, the same problems when they're putting together Superman project all the time, which is Mm -hmm. what do you do to a guy who's basically all powerful? Yeah. And we've seen that there are many things you can do, you know, over the years. I mean, he's still, he's still around. Um, I'd love to see something, you know, we, we always like throw, you know, like doomsday at him and, you know, Mm -hmm. anti monitors and, you know, like things that are going to end, you know, the universe. I would love to see something, super personal which i know doesn't necessarily lend itself to games um because you gotta you gotta knock stuff down and you know really uh mm. and have giant set pieces and stuff like that uh but i would love uh i'd love to see something like like low key yeah like where we you know the opposite of what you think you would go with like small and, interesting yeah like I mean, yeah. like maybe not like heavy rain. Look, like not like okay, we're gonna okay, Superman's gonna shave now, you know, for a while. Or but but something in that direction would be yeah. would be really cool. Like so. maybe he gets amnesia at the top mm. and disappears mm. for a while, like and then finds his like his life and his powers as it, and you you build in power, you know, as through. Right. The, I don't know. And I'm just spitballing now, just because I love you know Superman and uh, but but that'd be that'd be cool. What's your feeling different. on the Justice League, man? What's your feeling on the Zack Snyder's Justice League, man? Are you excited about this? Are you curious? I'm, I'm curious. I'm more curious okay. than I'm excited. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I did not like. I did not like the movie. Um, okay. But I like some of those characters a lot, mm-hmm. and I'd be curious to see, you know, if it's if it's any different. I'll watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, HBO Max has been killing. It. I'm not gonna lie. At first, I was like, oh, well, I'm already paying for HBO. We'll see. You know what they? Um, but they've they're they're curating. Yeah. Like their that their animated stuff mm-hmm. has been like it's like Samurai Jack and yep. Steven Universe and like all like the really good stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so so that's been that's been cool. But yeah, I'll watch the Snyder Cut. Okay. I, I wasn't like a release the Snyder Cut guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right. but I'll watch it. I'm curious <laughs> and, for sure. But you weren't anti it either. You're just yeah, like, I wasn't, yeah, and yeah. I'm not anti Zack Snyder either. I think yeah, you know, I've I've you know, there are things of his that I've really liked and things of his that not, and he's he's disappointed me on many occasions. But yeah, I don't I don't I don't hate Zack Snyder. I, I want him to keep making movies. I will keep watching Zack Snyder movies. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. Hey, uh, real quick, uh, Yuri, right. can you yeah. tell John what uh the best part of Spider Man game that you've played that oh, he should look forward to? Uh John, I will tell you what. This game, um, uh, and I told him, I said you should just have like tourist mode. Where you turn off all the missions. Oh yeah, all, you just you know, watch, and you just and no, and you just swing around. You just swing around Manhattan. Oh wow! Because the because just it's just there's this feeling of like kinetic mm-hmm. like flight and oh. like magic. Mm-hmm. Like it is truly like they captured what it feels like to be Spider Man. Damn dude, um, absolutely. And I, and just just swing around, John. <laughs> just swing around Manhattan. Just do just just swing. Don't even don't even play the don't even do any of the missions. Just swing around Manhattan. <laughs> I'm gonna get high and do that. I'm gonna get high. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, Put it on Twitch, John. Put it on Twitch. <laughs> yeah. There goes my career. <laughs> Thanks, Sean, man. Uh, oh, good. I got a little bit. Good to meet right. you, man. Uh, we got one more question, and, and then I know my boy Yuri's got to roll. Gotta get out. Yeah. Ben Rayner said, "Hey, Roka and Yuri, hope you all having a good week. If you guys are Doctor Who fans, who's your favorite Doctor? I'm not the biggest, but mine is Matt Smith." So what's who's your favorite doctor? Um, my, you know, you, I, I, I think, and, and and people can correct me if you're wrong. I think you always love your first doctor mm-hmm. the best. And Tom Baker, the fourth doctor, was my first oh, doctor growing nice, up. Nice. So I mean, I, you know, I, I had, I had like a long coat and I, I knitted. I learned to knit so I could knit myself a twelve foot fucking scarf. <laughs> um, 
but uh, so so Tom Baker will always be my yeah. doctor. But when I came back to it, um, I, I didn't I didn't catch it at at Eccleston. Although I went back and watched Eccleston, mm-hmm. and he was genius. But Tennant, like David Tennant, there's just something magical about David Tennant. Yeah, in, for so many reasons. Yeah, um, and I'm I'm a big fan of uh, Tennant. So so it would probably be it probably be Tom Baker with with Tennant in second position for me. Well. I, I'm a late fan, so for me, Capaldi was my first full doctor, and I yeah. I liked him a lot uh, because they said he was very reminiscent of the first doctor, and so yeah, I found William some, yeah William Hart. I found some of those old episodes of him, and now they all have, like we have um uh, what's it called uh, not Acorn, but there's another one that we have that's a BBC app yeah, that uh, we pay for Brit Britbox Britbox that's it Britbox, and they have all the old episodes. And right. so when I went back and started watching the old hard nail stuff, it made me appreciate what Capaldi did even more. So I really, yeah. and, and uh, Capaldi's Doctor Who and, and Bill, that was the greatest, one of the greatest seasons I, of any TV show. I still only just to scratch the surface on that one. Oh, dude. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you, I, uh, here's, here's the kind of nerd I am. I used to uh, go to Doctor Who conventions when I, was, yeah. when I was a kid in high school. And I have every doctor's, uh, every doctor from uh, from uh, from the from let's see, because except William Hartnell, yeah. who had died by the time I got into Doctor Who, right? I have everybody through Sylvester McCoy have their autograph. Oh my god! And then wow. and after Sylvester McCoy, you know, they there was no Doctor Who for a while until we came back right. with Eccleston. But yeah, I have everybody's autograph. <laughs> I went to conventions, and got everybody's autograph. They're still doing them. They have yeah. them by that airport in LAX. I know my friends go. It's a three day week now, a weekend rather, where yeah. they go and do that. So yeah, massive. Um, all right, man, I'm gonna let you go because I know oh, you got to no. go on a recording session. You're the best. Uh, the hour and a half flew by. Uh, uh, we got. Do we need it? We need to communicate more. Clearly, yeah. we need to communicate more. So 100%. I will make more of an effort on my end for sure. As crazy as busy as I am, I always love hearing your voice, my man, or talking with the you. The feeling anything, is so. mutual. I'm so glad you're doing the show. Put Thank me on the man. short list for like if people ever cancel on you, you know where to find me. Please, always. always. Catch up. Yeah, that, that'd be the way to go. Hold on, let me put the banner back up so people know uh, where to find you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you can find Yuri Lowenthal at Yuri Lowenthal on Instagram and on Twitter. Is there anything people need to watch out for that you've got coming up uh, that you got can some announce? Of streamly, some of those streamily signings coming up. There you go. If you want to get an autographed picture from Yuri Lowenthal, go go and follow him on his Instagram and social media. He always publishes those stream elite things coming up, so you can go be a part, get an autographed picture from Yuri Lowenthal sent to you, and listen for his voice on the PS5 game coming up uh, this week at the Spider-Man Miles Morales game. So and we'll Bucks see. Next. Yeah. And Bucks next. That's right. right. All right. Thanks, Yuri. It's great to see you, brother. Thank Take you, care. John. I love, I love you, you. Thanks for having me on the Outlaw Nation. Thank you, brother. Take care of yourself. See All you right, soon. You know it. All right. Well, that was Yuri Lowenthal. He's got to run off and do a recording. The man never stops. So uh, it was incredible to have him on the show. We haven't talked in a while uh, verbally. We've been texting, but we hadn't talked in a while verbally for quite some time. So uh, it was great to get on uh, with him, and I wish him all the best. And I'll definitely be reaching out to him and asking him about uh, a, uh, a uh, you know getting represented by him by his agent. That would be a lot of fun. I'd love to book some more time uh, for sure. You, what does it say, Brian? You got, yeah, got to schedule your time, my guy, Roka. Good night, guys. Okay. Uh, all right. If uh, We're going to be on for another half an hour. You know, the show goes two hours. So if anybody has any questions or any comments they want to, or if Sean, you want to tell them how they can come in live if they want to ask any questions live. Yo, you want to tell them? Yo, yo, you Sean, know, yo. <laughs> why I keep saying yo? That's weird. Uh, you know what you should Let do? Let me do me on my show, son. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> you should have him back on after you play the game. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, producers have good ideas. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, what I'll do is I'll put the link in the chat and you guys can come in and ask John any questions that you want. If it's about Yuri, about the Schmodown, about any yeah. movie news or anything that's going on. Uh, so we can, you know, we got another half hour. So let's keep John yeah. entertained. Keep me entertained, Mother- motherfuckers. Let's have some fun. <laughs> it's getting crazy. <laughs> Ask me whatever you want to ask me. How did you get a PS5? I won't, I've been I've been trying so bad. Well, people are scaring me though, Sean. People are saying, "Well, I got my notification that it's confirmed." I'm like, "Are you supposed to get a notification that's confirmed?" I paid. Some, some people have, some people haven't. I know like initially some people who ordered it got they they got pushed back, so oh. I know that um Do they tell you if you get pushed back? Yeah, they do. So if you haven't then you're probably fine. I but I know fine. that um 
like all the store like ps5 is not gonna be in any physical store okay this year. right so right, right, right. i have to i have to search online i ordered miles morales game i pre-ordered that so i have oh. that in the hand oh um when it comes up i just need to find a ps5 somewhere so i was just gonna buy that when i got the game well the game yeah the game is not is not gonna be that hard you can you can pre-order the game right now that's not gonna be hard for you oh, it's okay, game the okay. system that's hard so okay. uh but but you should play the ps4 version first because um even though it's not the sequel, it's still yeah. a sequel to the game because Miles is in the first one. Oh, so okay. So here's what I have from PayPal. Thanks for your order at Best Buy. Money won't leave your account until Best Buy processes your order. So okay. what does that mean? So, like like I said, like the this crazy day, and I remember the day because we were in a hangout. Yeah. Uh, when it went live, I tried and I couldn't get through. So a lot of people who got confirmation that day. Uh -huh. A couple of days later, Best Buy sent people notifications like, hey, even though your order's gotten through, you're not going to get it on launch day. Yeah. So if you haven't gotten anything like that, you should be okay. Jesus, maybe I should call in. I've got an order number. I It wouldn't hurt. I mean, it wouldn't Yeah, hurt. yeah, yeah. But um, Now you guys got me nervous. No, no, I'm John, I'm sure you'll be fine. But I... I uh, have you did you buy the uh the original Sony uh Spider-Man game yet? No, no, no. I haven't bought that yet. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Oh wow. Like that game is so much fun. Uh-huh. He wasn't lying when he's just like swinging around. Like I haven't played like I beat the game. I pretty much did everything that you could do except for find all the hidden photo places which is annoying. Right. Uh but the, after a while it is just fun swinging around. Okay. So like, and the Miles game looks exactly plays. It looks and plays exactly like um, the PS4 Spider-Man uh -huh. game did. So I'm looking forward to that. That's the only reason I bought the PS5. Right. It's like, oh Miles, yep. Take my money, please. Okay. I have oh. money. Take it, Sony. Take, it. take my money. <laughs> uh, yeah. This says on my PayPal that it's still pending. So they haven't taken the money out yet. So I don't know if I'm gonna get. I'm supposed to be getting one. They said I got one. Well, uh, well, I got wait, it on. Wait, wait. I pre-ordered it on September seventeenth, twenty twenty. Okay, are you getting it from Best Buy? Yeah, Best Buy. Okay, so they the other shipping it to you because they don't they don't, they don't have any in the store. No, I ordered it to be uh, shipped to the Best Buy that's two minutes away from the house. Oh, okay. So I but they haven't sent me a confirmation saying that it's official. So I may have to. But I, PayPal I, has it as pending. I, so, I would look into that. I yeah, would I would look into, look into it. I'm going to look into it for the love of God. <laughs> I'm, I'm, hey guys, I'm just gonna put the link in the chat right now for. Oh yeah, yeah. sorry. Do to, that. To jump in. Do that. Do that. What is this? All this shit. Oh right, right, right. Um. Okay. All right. Do we have people coming in? Do we have anyone? Oh, I didn't even look. I'm sorry. I was looking so caught up with the get my PS5. Let me see if I've got people like who's sending in questions or anything. Uh, there I am. All right, Streamlabs. Blah, 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 blah. What is this? Uh, I'm getting a PS4 Slim. Use PS4 Slim. Blah, blah, blah. All right. No one sent in any any super chats. Send in your super chats, Streamlabs, ladies and gentlemen. Come on now. We're going to be here for another half an hour. Yeah. Let's get this going. Um. All right. The link's in the chat, guys. Come oh, on. There man. we go. All right. I'm going to drop you out, right? All right. Yeah, because I got to right. go. Yep. Brennan. Hello. What's going on, my man? Good. Um, what do you think about these rumors of the uh, the Boba Fett uh, miniseries, possibly? Yeah. Uh, why are we announcing a Boba Fett miniseries or rumoring a Boba Fett miniseries when we haven't a hundred percent confirmed that Tomorrow Morrison is actually Boba Fett in the show? That's why are we question. jumping the gun? I have a good question. That's a good question. Don't you think? Yeah, it is a good question. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I got this shirt. I don't know who sent it to me. But there was no message. But someone sent me a baby, uh, a baby Yoda shirt today. Thank you. I'm wearing it in honor mm -hmm. of my patrons and whatever. So I don't know who sent it, but yeah, I mean, not me. It's kind of, okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of crazy that uh, we don't have like um, that. You would it's a rumor a Boba Fett miniseries without being sure that you have a Boba Fett actually in the show. A lot of yeah, people think that well, that's, that pretty much confirms it, but I don't know. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Um. So yeah, what do you think about that? If it were true, I I love that because then we could ex explore like how he got out of the Sarlacc pit, what he's been doing since. Um. And I don't remember where it was. 
we were talking about it on the show, one of the shows. I don't know if it was Geek Buddies or this was the show with Laura, but like, um, mm. there are in in not in canon, but in other uh, stuff, he leaves behind being a Mandalorian to become like a protector or a guardian. Yeah. So um, if they go that route, then you're I mean, actually they have fleshing the, out the character. They can the go with that. It's right. True. Yeah. I also what have you this thought today. What about Slave One? Yeah, what where is Slave One? Slave One, yeah. Right, right. Who's in charge of that? Who, like, is it docked somewhere? Yeah, I don't know. I yeah. would assume he took it to... Um, to Tatooine to drop off on Solo. Right, 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 right. Which is like, you know, five years before The Mandalorian. Yeah. Yeah, so it's weird. It's weird like that, so yeah. Yeah. I I, yeah. So I thought I would uh, ask you. Yeah. So, yeah. What do you think about it? Do you think it's um, weird? I've never been a huge Boba Fett man. Okay. But I wouldn't say no. Yeah. If they, if they know how to make it work. Like, right? I wasn't a fan of Darth Maul yeah. until they brought him back in the cartoons. Right, right. So, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. we'll see. Um, all right, Bernard. Anything yeah, else? You're good. That's all I got. All right. It's good to see you, brother. Uh, I'll you see too. you on the Discord Hangout tomorrow. Okay. See you then. Much love, brother. Much love. Yeah, that's my uh, Patreon there, right there. Uh, Patreon.com slash John Rogue. If you want to go and join it, we do the Hangouts twice a week. We got uh, the Discord Hangout on Wednesdays and the on-camera Hangout on Fridays, which is a lot of fun. So go and get involved with that if you want to come join. You can multiple tiers there available. If you join at the $50 tier, uh, every month you get a half-hour uh, conversation with me one-on-one, talk about whatever, life, um, your career, relationships, um, uh, friendships, business, whatever you want to talk about, politics, Boba Fett miniseries, whatever you want to talk about. If you donate at that level, that's what you get, along with all the other things that you get to participate in. And those uh, Patreon shows will be relaunching again very, very soon. So you will get access to those shows exclusively. And then a couple of those will bleed out onto the channel, but not for a few days until uh, not for a few days after they were dropped, they are dropped for the patrons to watch and to take a look at and participate in. Uh, also, hit that like button if you ever hit the like button on this thing. We got 109 likes, 88 of you all watching us live. A little bit of a low number tonight. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of things going on in the world, so maybe some of y'all distracted by everything that's going on in the world. Uh, but would love to, for those of you who are watching, uh, please uh, give it a like if you haven't given it a like. Uh, for those who are watching later, please give it a like as well. Leave a comment. Uh, down below. I don't know what I don't know what I want to get into. Sean, what are, what are you leaving? What are you leaving? <laughs> I was uh, probably like five minutes or so. Five minutes. All right. Well, yeah. what's going on in the world, man? What are people upset? Are people what's going on in the world? Are people happy? Well, I, I think I think most of the country is pretty happy, you know, considering yeah. what's happening. But there, I'm sure that people are sad. But for the most part, I think everything is going in the right direction. Hopefully. Okay. okay. Buckeye Joe Jet wants to know, hey, John, miss the sports show. Can a WTF fan please explain how Mark Rippon led one of the greatest teams of all time to a Super Bowl win, won Super Bowl MVP, but hadn't done jack shit afterwards? What happened? What a weird career. I was too young to remember. Thanks. Are you a sports guy, Sean? Your, your Giants you, suck. You, I'm I, just saying, are you a sports uh, guy? Excuse me? Yeah, we beat yeah. your Washington team, so I, you should be That's quiet. not a team. We don't have a team. That was not a team that you beat. That was well, an assemblage I, of players who showed up day of I to uh, swore, collect a paycheck. You, yeah, well, you, we played a team that had a Washington name on it, and we yeah, won. Yeah, I guess so. So I don't know what you're saying. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, uh, yeah, Mark the, Rippin, you know, yeah, disappeared. Here's what i tell you about Mark Rippin. First of all, uh, you got to put some respect on the name of Mark Rippin because he's been a very big advocate over the last few years for mental health awareness. He went mm -hmm. through a very severe depression after he started after he stopped playing football and was and almost committed suicide. And he had, he had substance abuse issues and a lot of stuff going on with Mark. And his son right now is one of the quarterbacks on the roster for the Denver Broncos. So, um, but Mark, yeah, he had that one year. It was a glorious, magical year, um, and everything just kind of lined up with the right weapons, the right coaching. Uh, and a great defense, and we stomped through the NFL and beat the Bills in the Super Bowl. It was a glorious mm – -hmm. I still think that's one of the top five greatest teams to ever play football. People can kiss my ass trying to tell me there's anybody else. My Redskins would have stomped just about any other great football team you can name 
including the Patriots. Okay, including the Patriots. They'd have, they'd have had Tom Brady for lunch. They'd have had. I mean, Tom the ones Brady. the Giants beat. You know, the one the Giants beat. Right, right. The Giants. If the Giants could beat him, you know, the red, the skins. My skins would have destroyed them if the, if those Eli Manning led Giants teams could win. Well, uh, uh, with you let's, know, with let's, pl- pl- I mean, plexiglass Burris isn't scaring whoa, any whoa, whoa, of whoa, my whoa, whoa, whoa. my DBs on the on whoa, the skins. Daryl Green would have had that boy for lunch again. For lunch. Let, let's back that up a little bit. Back Monty Coleman would have danced all over Eli Manning's head. Give me a break, Sean. Uh, I back that up. I don't know. Break. Some of the 49er teams would have beat those Washington teams probably um, from the 80s with Jay Wright and Joe Montana. We, we beat that 49ers team to get to the Super Bowl <laughs> the second time. <laughs> Wasn't a questionable pass <laughs> interference? Well, maybe. But uh, we even, still won the game. No, you know. Don't, you know. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah. I think he, I think his year is kind of comparable uh, in a lesser sp- uh, aspect to um, – oh, what's his name now? I just had it in my brain. Brad Johnson. I think oh. that's the connection. Not Trent. Trent's a crap quarterback. Rippon was good, astronomically good for that year. Yeah. And I think Brad Johnson is a comparable – because Ash- Brad Johnson was – great that year for that one year he was great you know but it was kind of okay for a couple of years but then he yeah. fell off a cliff and yes. then he was he yeah. was done so um yeah. oh what's his name uh who kneels a lot tim tebow when he had that one good year and then that was it you can't you bite your tongue you don't compare tim tebow to mark rippon <laughs> rippon didn't need last second running end arounds on a fourth down to beat the jets all right rippon would have won 41 to 10 <laughs> We were incredible. Oh, Scott Welsh says uh, Mark Rippon's cousin Rick played for the, my Vancouver Canucks. He too had mental health issues and unfortunately committed suicide. Ah, oh, Jesus. Oh, that's unfortunate. He was a hell of a fighter on the ice. Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you. I mean, this thing is we've only scratched the surface of the things that have that go around mental health. Uh, you know, a lot of times it is genetic, uh, and a lot of times it's just you know a, a certain um, combination of forces that uh, combine to send you into a place. And those are things you have to be aware of. And there's no simplistic answer and there's no simple approach to it. You know, it's other than understanding that it's out there, being respectful of the people who suffer with it and how to navigate it correctly. Uh, but my heart goes out to uh, to his family for knowing that I didn't know that. So, um, yeah, uh, Brian Brawls says, we've got to remember the people who had lives are just that. Individuals, he Roka goes on one of his rants, typical old people shenanigans. <laughs> what I was just saying. Shenanigans. That's an old word there, shenanigans. too. Shenanigans. You and your yeah. shenanigans. I love these guys, old people. I'm younger than they are. I got more energy <laughs> than they do. They can well, kiss both my me, ass cheeks. Let me ask you a question. Since you're getting, <laughs> it looks like you're going to get your PS5. What other games? I hope so. Uh, Fuck. Well, well, you're P- on PS4 slash PS5. I'm nervous now. To? Uh, FIFA. My FIFA. Are you kidding? I'm waiting for my FIFA. I want to see what FIFA looks like on the PS5. People say it's otherworldly. I've seen some reviews of it and people say it's otherworldly. So I can't wait because I remember when it, I played it on the PS4 and yeah. I could see faces in the stand. I was losing my shit. I was losing my shit. You could see the the faces of the players that look so similar to the players. I mean, I remember mm-hmm. playing on a PC, FIFA 99. I played on a PC, man. So oh, to be able to play it on a PS4 was incredible. Um, and so if the PS5 can go to the next level, then I'm excited. Madden, NHL. Yeah. People don't talk about NHL enough. That game is incredible. You know, I know Madden's good. I know NBA Live or NBA 2K, whatever it is. Those are good games. <laughs> FIFA's good. But the NHL games are consistently a blast to play, and a lot of fun to play, and they give you an appreciation for the game as well when you're playing them. So that's what I would say for that. Uh, I, I haven't played an NHL game in a long time, but what I'm looking yeah. forward to eventually on the PS5 is less load times, and then you can delete yeah. parts of the game that you don't want. So if you don't play online, you can just delete that part and save memory space. So yeah. like those kinds of things, I'm like, just, mm, I can't mm-hmm. wait. Yep. I can't wait. I'm yeah. looking forward to it. See, Brian Brawl says, I'm 28 and you're probably more energy than me. That's right. That's right. <laughs> John's he's, got like 300 shows. Of course, he's got a lot of energy. You soft ass young motherfuckers. I got more energy than you guys. I had to fight for this world. I don't get to sit around in my privilege. I fought to be where I'm at in this world and I'm going to stay here. You're going to have to drag me <laughs> kicking and screaming. You're going to have to drag me kicking and screaming out of the oh, way. No, no, there right now. You're gonna have to, I'm not going willingly. I'm not going willingly. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, 
All right, Sean, I know you got to go, so I'll yeah, let you go, uh, man. Yeah, Much you love. guys have fun for the rest of the night. Tell Drew I said hi, bud. I will. Respect. Uh, all right, let's bring in Justin Toner, who's been waiting to come on. Justin, what's going down, man? How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good, John. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. What's the deal, my man? Oh, I got a couple of things. Uh, did sure. you get to see the uh, AEW pay-per-view from Saturday night? No. Full gear no, yet, no? Given, no one's given me a link to it with a, without having without oh. me having to pay for it. So I, I want to uh, see it, but I got I got to get my hands on a link, man. So did you like yeah, it? it yeah, yeah, it was it was really good. Um, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think what were the best matches. Yeah, what was your favorite um, match of the night? Was it Orange Cassidy? Was it MJF? What was your favorite match of the night? I think my favorite was probably uh, Young Bucks versus FTR tag title wow. match. Okay. Um, it went a little long, but mm -hmm. like the last like. 10, 50 minutes were insane because okay. they um, they started like busting out like legendary tag team finishers, both of them. Like wow. they like uh, FTR used like the heart attack. Uh, it's like the Bucks but did uh, twist of fate into a swanton. Oh. It's like they were. It, it was. It was. It just like it was. It was like their love letter to all their heroes. Right, that, you know their right. favorite tag teams. And they yeah. just threw into the match. Um, the drama awesome. was great. You know, it was like like Matt was like selling the. You know, they were going after Matt's uh, injured injured uh, knee and, uh, and leg yeah. and everything. The whole match, he yeah. was selling like crazy. It was fantastic. <laughs> the uh, the I quit match. Whew, uh, yeah, the I quit match. The I quit match main event was pretty brutal. Right. Uh, That's what I heard. And we kind of anticipated on Strong Style that it was going to be one of the most brutal matches of the night. And certainly it was that with Moxley versus uh, what's his name? Uh, Darby Allen. Eddie, is that what it is? It was Eddie Kingston. Oh, sorry. Eddie Kingston. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was it was brutal. Like, like they uh, they channeled like their inner Mick Foley in this match. So they uh, they went with the barbed wire baseball bat. Thumbtacks were involved. <laughs> there was even thumbtacks that got inside Moxley's head. You could. Uh, oh, Poor, poor Renee, poor Renee Young was just like, uh, on Twitter, you know, he <laughs> reacted to this match. I, I was like, I feel for her, man. Cause it's like, she loves her husband, but she does not enjoy when he does the hardcore matches. Cause she doesn't like seeing him, you know, get all effed up and everything. Look, so like, you chose to marry the man. You chose yeah. to marry that man. You <laughs> this is what you got to live with. Now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was brutal. It's like, they were, it's like the, I don't know if they were using real barbed wire or not. It's like, sometimes yeah. it's hard to tell, but it's like, uh, where there was late? Go, sorry, go ahead. Uh, there was one brutal spot where um, I don't know if it was legit, but uh, uh -huh. Eddie Kingston raided like the first egg kick near ringside and pulled out the the, the rubbing alcohol, and oh, after the thumbtacks poured it all over Boxley's back, and I was ah, it's like so I don't know if that was like legit alcohol uh -huh. or not, but just the thought and his <laughs> and he sold it. Like he would have been shot, you know, because oh all, all the all the wounds and everything on his back. It's like it was it was it was fantastic. <laughs> ah, that's incredible. Uh, that's the women's matches, uh, yeah. The, the ladies' the Sheeta, matches any good? The Sheeta Nyla Rose match was a di was one of the disappointments because okay they overbooked it. It got it got really ridiculous, and also there was some sloppiness too. There was like oh. some there were some botches. It was it was unfortunate because they're both good mm -hmm. performers. Yeah. But um, that was like one of the bigger disappointments. Uh, the Darby Allen Cody match was really good. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, Dar uh, Darby went over. They finally yeah. uh, they finally put the title on him. It was a great match. Yeah. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, looks like Team Taz is like is not done with Darby because they uh, because like you know Cody, it was for a bit there. People were wondering like Cody was gonna do the heel turn and not accept yeah. that you know Darby beat him, but you know then he handed him the title raise his hand, you know, it's like, you know, yeah. being like the proper baby face. But then like Taz and Team Taz came out and just and attacked them. It's like Taz it's just like, this is sickening. It's like <laughs> they, they went after Darby. They tried to destroy Darby. And then yeah. Cody Cody and Will Hobbs got involved trying to save Darby from getting destroyed. They uh they tried to like break his arm inside the car in a car door. Oh my god. But uh, like Will Hobbs saved him at the last second before they could right. finish you know, they could finish the job. So it's like that feud yeah. isn't that feud is just getting started. They're not right. <laughs> team Taz is like out to destroy Darby. They're not done with him yet. Yeah. I'm have to watch that. I'm definitely. No, it, it was a, it was a really good show. Hopefully you can be able to check it out. 
Yeah. Um, I'm sure somebody's going to send me a link to something. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to watch it. Uh, do you have another uh, question? Or you good? Uh, one other thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, the uh, Criterion Collection sale, Barnes and Noble kicked in yeah. past Friday. Yeah. Um, were you thinking of picking up anything this month? Uh, yes. Parasite. Uh, yeah, me the, too. I haven't. I, it's like uh, that's one of the ones I'm going to get eventually. I got to wait for my next paycheck because I bought because I bought a few. It's right. like I, it's like trying. It's hard because it's like there's so many good movies on the Criterion Collection that I want to yeah. get. But it's like I got got to watch my budget. So yeah. um, I picked up uh, War oh. of the Worlds. Nice, the old yeah. school one, right? right, right. Yeah, Ron and, Taylor. Uh, Welcome an old school for this one. Uh, got the Philadelphia story. Oh, nice. Yeah, Gary I Grant, Jim Stewart. I don't think I've seen this. Uh, it's like, I'm, it's like, I'm like, I was looking at, it, I was like, Oh, Philadelphia. Sorry. I don't think I've ever watched it. So I was like, <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get that. But I love world of the worlds. Um, yeah. They're both, uh, they're both been 4k restorations for both of these. So I'm looking forward to seeing nice. how nice they look. Yeah. So um, I, I grew up with world of the worlds. I remember watching that was a kid. Oh, world of the worlds the is amazing. The, yeah. It's like the, just the, the those spaceships there. Oh, like, every time I thought when I was a kid, it's like, Death Ray. Yeah, like, oh, oh shit. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. I'm looking forward to seeing how it looks with the with the restoration. Yeah, but yeah Parasites one. Um, I'm trying to think of. I might. I, Irishman I might for the me. Irishman, I don't know. It's yeah, like I'm the Irishman is coming. Um, it's Moonstruck probably gonna, gonna get. get it. Moonstruck's Which coming one? out this month. Oh yeah, yeah, Moonstruck. And uh, I, had, I, I had a list. You have a list. I had a list. Because I was going through, because the thing is, dude, I'm a mad addict to this shit, so I get in trouble. Like, yes, yeah. I get into a little bit of trouble. I'll just say that. Oh, because I'm I, sure. I start to buy too many, and I go, "Well, tap off." Uh, and the next thing yeah. you know, it's like a hundred bucks uh, right out the fucking I'm door. The, and I'm, I'm, I'm the good. same way. Uh, I have another friend who's uh, he, he's a he's a film guy as well, and he loves yeah. Criterion Collection as well. And it's like we uh, we both like text each other, you know, like. Uh, it's gonna. It's like I want to. It's like about like, mm, should I buy this much or should I raid myself in? You know, it's like it's like because like the July sale, I went nuts. I bought like ended oh. up buying like like do a dozen a dozen. Wow. Uh, Blu -rays. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I had some oh. money. I pulled. I had some money uh, left over from the stimulus, yeah. so I was like, I had like oh, an no. extra like hundred bucks. So I was like. Uh, so it's like because I, I went mad. I bought a bunch of stuff that I wanted. So I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but this time I'm like, mm, I gotta rein it in. It's like that's why I only yeah, started I, with a two, and I'm gonna try to figure out like, okay, I'm gonna be selective probably. Uh, well, I've been, I've been to time. I've been to three Barnes and Nobles here in San Diego. They don't sell Criterion Collection, and I'm like, oh, that's, what the that's fuck? I've never been to an LA Barnes and Noble that didn't sell Criterion Collection movies. So I was oh, shocked. Bummer. So uh, I'm going to probably have to order them online and get them delivered. Yeah. But here are the ones I was looking at all about Eve, which I've, I've, I've never seen. So it'd be good to watch it. Uh, I know it. I need to get that. My, I need to get that one too. Fail safe. The Cindy Lamette one with That's uh, one of the other ones I'm looking Walter to get. Matthew. I've heard. Yeah. I've, I've never seen fail safe. I've heard it's really good. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. gunfighter, which of course I got to get it. I'm, not, I'm yeah. the outlaw. I got to get it. It's the new, mm -hmm. the new one they dropped about the old Gregory Peck film, uh, which I've seen a couple of times. So that'd be fun to get. The Irishman and Parasite. Those are the five right now uh, that I'm looking at to get yeah. from the collection. And we'll Last see. Last time if I, I picked I like a couple of westerns. Like I got like my darling Clementine oh, after you great. did the first. Oh yeah. Uh, Criterion video. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also ended up picking up um, Red River and. What was the other one? Oh, Destry Rides Again. Have you ever seen oh, yeah. that one? Yes, I have it right here. Yeah. I haven't gotten to watch it yet. I, I, I was like, I'd never even heard of it before. I was like, oh, yep. Jimmy Stewart and Marlene Dietrich in a Western together? I got to get, I got to watch that. That's why I bought <laughs> it. Like, yeah, that's why I bought it, man. They got to, they got to do more Westerns. They're, they're kind of only occasionally doing more yeah. Westerns. Uh, what's it? Oh, Chris Taylor says, so Roka can buy a PS5 but not a wrestling pay per view. Well, a PS5. <laughs> A PS5 I get to keep forever. A wrestling right. pay-per-view is right. a one night, for God's sakes. 50 bucks. It's ridiculous to me. Um, oh, one, yeah. oh, one last thing before I go. Uh, uh, one of the ones that I, I still need to get that's also a Western, uh, McCabe and Mrs. Miller is on oh, Criterion. Yeah. I, I really like that film. I haven't seen it in a long time. That's, yeah. a, that's a really cool like 70s West, like postmodern Western. It's like very right. different. It's yeah. like um, I saw it like a first time in college. I think it was during a film class. It was one of the movies we watched. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's where it's like 
it's like my love film it's like that was like one of my favorite classes i ever took when i was in college yeah um because i was an english major and it was this um it was film class and we uh the we he selected a bunch of films to watch mm -hmm. over the semester yeah. and we'd watch the movies and then discuss them afterwards and we got to pick like which one we want to go in depth in so like yeah um, one of them was Blade Runner, thankfully. Oh, so nice. I got to be, I got to do the Blade Runner with a couple of people. And right. so we got together we, after we, we, we watched the movie ahead of time. And then we got together and we like discussed like, well, what stuff, what, what topics about the movie do you want to talk about with yeah. everybody afterwards? Kind of like to be able to generate discussion. Yeah. We got, that was the first time I ever saw Weird Window. So that's how I became a Hitchcock oh, fan. It was a great, yeah. 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 It, it was a great selection. We, we watched King Kong, Weird Window, um, <laughs> Seconds by John Frankenheimer. Right. You know, it was, uh, Blade Runner, a lot of a lot of great selections. It was it was fantastic. Uh, <laughs> I, I I miss it. I don't think Rear Window is a is a Criterion one. So no, we, should, we need to get on that because you got Rebecca. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I got, um, I'm gonna be watching that soon. My friends and I are gonna do a Hitchcock night. We're gonna watch Rebecca. Oh, nice. Yeah, because oh, cool. as I bought that a while ago, but I haven't. I that's one of the ones. That's one of his big ones. I haven't seen yet. The only yeah, one you got yeah. an Academy Award for. So, right, the only one the one best picture. True, true. Uh, all right, Justin. Well, good talking to yep. you, brother man. It's good to see you. Uh, yep. Thanks for the heads up on full gear, and uh, I'll let you know when I see it. And you let me know what you think of Philadelphia Story when you watch it. Yeah, definitely. Respect. All right, brother. Good to see. You. Take care. Yep. Thanks, Justin. Good stuff. Uh, let's see what do we got. Oh, uh, Soulshire nineteen ninety nine donated. Said which video game sticks in your head is numero one. I'm not much of a gamer anymore, but Metal Gear Solid on the PS one is my pick. Gameplay and story was so engaging. felt like a Hollywood movie at points. Shout out to Uncharted, Last of Us, and Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah, I mean, Uncharted is the one. I played that with Shannon McClung, and that was an incredible, uh, fun thing to play. So that one stood out for me, the world that they built. Assassin's Creed was a bit too, I don't know, it got too dense for me at times, so it wasn't my jam, but Uncharted worked really, really well. I had a, no, a lot of fun with that one for sure. So that's what I would say. That's the one that sticks in my head is kind of number one in terms of, being able to play an all world type thing. I really enjoyed that one for sure. Uh, Jim fan underscore says, Hey John, just wanted to say, love the passion and dedication to put in everything you do. Thank you, Jim. Very kind of you. I've been a big fan of yours uh, for years. Oh, and finally want to chime in. You're a true inspiration. Cheers, man. I'll join in live next time. I just wanted to show some support. Well, thank you, Jim. I appreciate that. That's very kind of you. You know, just uh, plugging away down here on the Outlaw Nation channel, doing what we can uh, and seeing what we can uh, do. Um, I will let you know as we wrap up here, I've got an interview tomorrow that I'm dropping with uh, the uh, uh, director of, of the new uh, Philadelphia Eagles documentary. It's called Maybe Next Year. It's about their run to the Super Bowl in 2017. Kyle Thrash is the director. He started directing this documentary before he even knew the Eagles were going to the Super Bowl. So he just wanted to kind of like follow the Eagles for a year. He had no idea they were going to end up in the Super Bowl. So it's a fascinating conversation with him for about 35 minutes. If you're a budding filmmaker, a documentarian, I think it's going to be one that you'll enjoy very much. Uh, and of course, tomorrow, the Geek Buddies drops. Uh, we'll be talking. We recorded it already today because Shannon McClung has some things going on tomorrow. I couldn't record when our usual day of Wednesday. So we just missed the news that Mads Mickelson is the possible contender to replace Johnny Depp uh, as uh, uh, Gellar Grindelwald. So we shall see uh, what that is, but we do not have an opinion on that because that dropped after we recorded it. But we do talk about Johnny Depp leaving and what we'd like to see from that franchise. We also talk about uh, the COVID announcement, the vaccine, how that will help theaters going forward because a number of theater owners have already chimed in on the possibility of that vaccine being available and if things will start going back to normal by next March or April. Uh, we also talk about um, the video game announcements. The oh, oh, I forgot to ask Yuri about that Avengers video game and what he felt about it. And then uh, at the end, our main topic is us talking about how we think the election is going to affect media going forward, what kind of uh, content we think we'll see um, if Joe Biden gets sworn in on January 20th, who knows what's going to happen? Anyway, for those of you who are part of the Outlaw Nation, thank you so much for watching this. Give it a like, uh, leave a comment, and uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, and uh, we'll talk to you next week with another brand new episode here uh, of the Outlaw Nation show. And much love to all of you, and much love to Yuri for joining me today.